All right, so we are live. So, if did a quick recap for everybody prior to this. Um, Rob's going to read a little bit of information that they found, and we're going to jump right into this. So, Rob, why don't yeah. you entertain us? So, this is uh, information from uh, Randall's diary that Retkem is reading, or John? John. 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 Um, so, day one, interesting notes. Randall's father was an Arcana master in the city of Nessus. He was a major professor at the college. Randall had no interest in basic learning of the arcane and desired something more, something he could use to make himself better. He was often ridiculed by his peers for his hunchback and lame eye. He felt his father was disgusted of him too. He found a book in the library tucked away in a chest entitled The Teachings of Narkul, Dead Ghoul Arise. Day two, interesting notes. Randall has become fascinated by the book that he found and believes it will help him rise above the other students. His father found out about the book and burned it. This angered Randall beyond anything, so he left home and the school. He spent the next four years looking for any clues he could find about Narkul, which eventually led him to Sisebeck's pyramid. He paid a group of bandits an exorbitant sum to search the pyramid for the hand of Narkul. The bandits succeeded. They returned with shattered minds and a taste for flesh. Randall, Randall severed his left hand and attached the hand of Narkul, using it to guide the ghouls, the ghoul-diseased bandits. His search was not complete, and he heard voices telling him tales of a book, The Wanderer's Guide to the Night Sky. Randall arrived in Karamea and began digging up bodies for experiments. Day four, interesting notes. Randall was caught taking bodies and chased from the town by an angry mob. He retreated into the swamp, intending to go to Sisebeck's pyramid, but met a hag first. The two of them returned to Karamir. The hag took the form of a woman named Lisa, while Randall retreated to the tunnels beneath the town to continue his search. The last entry holds details a silver locket, disguised as a simple wedding charm, which holds the blood of Narku. Lisa is the cookie lady. That Yeah, I thought so. Because she was... Freaking creepy. <laughs> All right. And um, I believe, Rob, you have The Wanderer's Guide to the Night Sky as one of your books in your inventory. That's one of the ones you picked up from Randall's uh, layer there. <clears throat> All right. So if you guys want to start things off, as we ended, you guys headed out of this little shithole of a town. They had all these dead bodies and everything in it. And continued to head, uh, I guess, be sort of northwest to the Boned Column, which is where you were headed to. Um, you traveled most of the day without too much of a problem. Like I said, the sun, that red looming star, still hung in the sky, pretty much right where it is, just right, almost at noon sun, basically right in the middle of the sky. The sun itself just barely crested over the horizon and is already starting to set. Um, at the end of the last session, you guys were thinking about if you wanted to somehow camp out again until this is gone, or if you wanted to continue through the night some. You can feel as, you know, the sun starts to set this more burning sensation, this uh, sickening feeling in your gut as you kind of walk underneath this red star. It's not like literally hurting you or anything, but it's, it's definitely uncomfortable. And it seems to just be getting stronger and stronger as the night goes on. But we are, I mean, we've been traveling under the Red Star. Of course, the 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 regular, the sun has been in the sky as well. But we've, we're we covered yep. as far as that was the, from the previous day, Sir Belch wasn't entirely, but okay. Yep. So what and do you guys think? It's not leaving any sores or anything. It's just a very uncomfortable, very warm. The temperature is much higher than it should be. You know, it's just a, just an uncomfortable feeling. <sighs> So did anybody bring the sunscreen or? <laughs> well, and two, um, we're on, I mean, do we know, I mean, is there, is there, um, you know, a tree line where we can possibly set up some sort of camp that's, I mean, cause we'll have to rest eventually, I guess, but. So where you guys are at is just north, I guess it'd be a little bit northwest of Nessus. Um, you are coming up to the river. You can probably see the river in the distance. Okay. Beyond the river is just open plains across until you can get to the bone column. Where you're at, there's certainly some trees and 
the river and bank and stuff like that. Okay. But, you know, once you get across there, it's a good day, if not more, underneath this, and there's it's just open plains out there. Maybe we should uh, <clears throat> camp now then while we have yeah. some cover. Yeah. Make the push the next day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. So you guys can mosey along. You definitely see some nice little outcroppings along the river, some embankments that have been washed in, you know, during the flooding times and stuff. So you can definitely get down under there, take some uh, cover from this star that's up above that continues to uh, kind of loom above you. Um, you guys want to set up any sorts of watch? If you can to look around, there's it's pretty much just open space. You don't see any pounds, nothing around, but... Yeah, we'll um, definitely set a watch. Yeah, John would volunteer for the first watch. Like, he would just sit there reading his books and stuff, like going through his journals and everything, and kind of keep it up. Um, yeah, Maris have to take a watch at any point. Okay. Um, John, since you're taking first, why don't you give me a perception challenge roll? I'll give you a one boon since even as the sun sets, though, everything, it's not daylight, but it, everything has a very clear red. Kind of almost like a red sun, really. So you can still see quite a ways in the distance. Just a very eerie. Let's see, that is a 13 on the die. All right. Um, it goes by really smooth while you're up for checking out the watch and stuff. You used to see some animals, a couple deer or something, kind of walk along the edge of this river bank. They're covered in these big, huge open sores, large blisters on their back. You can see a hoof, one of the extra leg and a hoof is growing from the side of one of them, kind of drags across the ground behind it. Um, another one in the distance kind of comes into view walking out of the tree line. It has this large uh, translucent sort of sack hanging from its stomach, and you can see what looks to be some sort of meat, you know, like a deer fetus or something moving around in there, but it just doesn't look right. It's definitely grotesque. Uh, give me a will challenge roll with one bane. Sure. 13 again. 13s. So you're good. Um, you know, it's definitely a horrifying sight as they kind of move <laughs> their self down to this river. You can see they drink up a little bit of the water. Uh, one of them collapses to the side. You can see it struggling, trying to get itself back up before it just lays still, breathing real heavily. The other one will kind of move over, sniff over it for a few seconds. And then you can see that it looks like it's uh, kind of nudging it or something. But when it brings its face back, you can see it's kind of covered in blood. And then it goes down, just continues to feed on this other one that's still trying to survive. That's awesome. So, so, like, are the other guys, like, are they awake and, like, hanging out or are they? No, they're sleeping. Okay. Um. <laughs> So yeah, John would definitely just kind of keep an eye on this, you know, make sure like, nothing like comes towards our camp to like attack. Now this goes on for most of your watch. You can see this other deer creature just, you know, consuming this one to the point where it's beyond dead at the, you know, and it just continues to eat pieces of meat off this thing before it finally kind of starts to wander away. This huge bulbous sack dragging across the ground, leaving this pussy sort of blood trail behind it and it disappears off into the woods. Uh, and I don't know who's taking second watch, but you could go wake up whoever you want. Um, yeah, I would. John would probably walk over and wake up Marrow. Yeah, I would be uh, probably sleeping, and as he sleeps, he's like dreaming of uh, all the different sort of uh, people he's turned into, and sort of every so often he'll just kind of, you know, shudder, and uh, his form will change to a different person who's dead. Uh, that he's transformed into. I so just, you turned into Torik for a while. Yeah, so I was Torik, but then in his sleep, he kind of loses control and uh, you know, he just kind of flashes through them. You're probably used to it by now, that it's creepy as shit. you with a stick, be like, hey, wake up. You know? <laughs> wake up, weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Keep arm's length, yeah. Yeah. Um, Meryl, why don't you give me a perception check for your watch? Uh, do I get any banes or anything? No, no okay. it's just straight up. Natural 19, so 20. Beautiful. Again, you know, your watch goes by pretty pleasantly. You can't see the remains of this uh, deer carcass down by the river. Every now and then it kind of shifts and wiggles a little bit. It looks dead. It can't get itself up or do anything, but it looks almost 
like it's zombie-ish or something. Twitch, as you can see, its head kind of wall about a little bit and then smack down on the rocks with this kind of sickening splat. But otherwise, other than that, nothing happens on your watch. And I assume you're going to wake up Retcom. i got to remember names again. Uh, yeah. Right. So, yeah, John. just wake him up. Probably, like, you know, shake his shoulders, but be slightly too close to his face. When he <laughs> just what, is, uh, what does uh, sort of, Mero look like today? Uh, Mero looks like um, a human uh, male with um, the sort of shoulder-length hair, um, um, hideously, hideously scarred face. Um, you guys wouldn't know who it is, but his uh, his face looks kind of as though um, it's just been sort of bludgeoned with like um, a cattle prod or something, like properly you know, <laughs> malformed, broken, and scarred. Um, yes, yeah, so he's not looking good today. Uh, the guy looks also about like uh, 40, 50 years old, like Morgan's age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Redcom wakes up and starts and, oh, good morning, ma'am, <laughs> with your lovely hair. <laughs> it's pretty nice. Any, but, any, anything he he asks Mario if there's anything of to note from his watch. Uh, no, there was a, a weird kind of zombie thing. Um, past so yeah being quiet all right and reckon i'm gonna need a strength challenge roll from you okay uh 13 13 so as the other two climb under their covers shielding themselves from this uh, star that's above and you sit out there watching this you know thing so you definitely still see that Thing that uh, Meryl kind of pointed out to you down below this, what's left of this deer carcass that kind of wallows about on the edge of the river bank. It moves a few feet as it kind of tries to drag itself, but doesn't really have much it can do. You want to just kind of watch this thing suffering. You can feel the sun above this red looming star get warmer and warmer. The morning's quite steamy. By the time, you know, it should be morning, the sun isn't coming up at all, but you can, you know, by your water watch, or whatever you carry to tell time. Uh, you can definitely see that it's morning time as the others start to stir and get about. Everything goes smooth through your watch as well. You don't see anybody beyond that that thing down there. But there is no sign of the sun. Uh, I think Joe froze. Yeah, looks like that. But yeah, you guys would be waking up in any case. You can see him sharpening his blade as he's you know getting prepared for the morning. Yeah, John would definitely like be waking up, you know, trying to find something to drink, and like you know, because I, I would assume it's very hot and he's very parched and dry at this point. So yeah, very hot, humid. Um, it would be fall, so the temperatures would be more in well, like the forties and fifties Fahrenheit range. I don't know what the hell that is. And, Celsius for us, but, um, but yeah, now it's getting much more closer to like the 90s and the 100s and just feeling real humid. Yep. Well, you said that this, we're like by a bank, like there, where there would be water. Um, uh, yes, it's you can see the river bank down below. It's not a huge river. It's maybe 15 meters across. Uh, it's not raging or anything. There hasn't been any rain in quite a while. It's just kind of lazy, moseying along. Sure. Um, so yeah, John would go down and like try to gather up like you know water and stuff to like gather supplies and take with them. Uh, Marrow just goes and kind of lies with his face in it for a little while. <laughs> cool. If it's actually the water feels quite refreshing. Um, when you get down there, it does have this reddish sort of tint to it. Um, you kind of bury your face in there. When you lift up, though, and you kind of look across, you can see what's left of a half lean body floating on by you. A few pieces of it kind of falling off, covered in these red blisters and sores. Ew. He kind of waits for it to pass and then puts his face back in. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. If you guys would have a rest, I don't know if anybody needed to heal up your healing rate, but you can do so. And you gain 1d3 endurance points if you need them. Uh, no, I think I, I marked my rest at the beginning of last time uh, for a proper rest, but I don't think we got one, so I'll just use that. Use it now. And his power went out, so we'll just continue on, and he'll jump in when he gets ready. So... Yeah, the morning comes up. You guys have no, there's no sun that seems to be coming up as you guys break camp, get everything gathered up, you decide to start moving. Um, you will have to wait across this river at some point as you follow it along. Otherwise, you're going to have to go way the hell around. But um, as you mo kind of move down and continue in the general direction, following the river for most of the ways, uh, most of the morning passes by. Still no sun, just this red looming star above. Uh, strength challenge rolls from both of you now. That is a three. <laughs> All right. You're going to lose one temporary hit point. Okay. 15 for me. All right. You're good. As this uh, star just, you know, continues to kind of bury its weight on your shoulders, uh, John, you feel your stomach kind of queasy, a little bit weakened this morning, like you didn't get a quite a good night's rest. Um, eventually you come to the point where you're going to have to cross this river unless you want, if you guys want to go way out and around, you certainly can. But um, on the other side, it just kind of opens up into this expanse of plains. Uh, Mero, you've probably been through at some point to kind of know your way around here. But uh, directly to the north, another day's travel across these plains is the Bone Column. That's where you guys are headed. Uh, from here on out, there is no cover, though, besides this tall, waving sort of sawgrass. Um, you know that there's a lot of orc tribes out here. Um, there's some nomadic uh, horse type uh, barbarian tribes that are out here. Generally, they're pretty decent people. The orcs, not so much. There's a lot of halfly nomad villages that kind of move from place to place to place. I love halflings. They're such kind and welcoming people. Yeah. Cannibalistic bastards. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like would John be aware of like the orc tribes and stuff in the area, or? Um, give me an intelligence challenge roll. For sure. a ten. So yeah, probably not overly familiar with who is what, but you definitely know that there's some more barbarian like uh, orc tribes that are out here. There's some human tribes that are known for their horse skills and their um, riding skills and such. And then halflings are all over the world, but they just move from campment to campment. Sure. Beyond that, there isn't a whole lot. There's definitely some other engines and its creatures and whatnot, but those are the main things known across the plains. Okay. See, so, yeah, like as they're like creeping along, John's gonna be like trying to keep low in the grass, you know, acting like a badass for you know his friend Marrow here, trying to like you know point out like you know stuff in the grass, like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, as you guys move, maybe an hour or so into this fields. Cross through the river, no problem there at all. It's pretty shallow for the most part. Get up the other embankment, start moving through these uh, open plains. You see a few animals' bodies that are littered about. All of them have been split open with these lesions, these large blisters. The further you get, the more and more animals, these large elk type things. Uh, you see burrs, just small, simple rodents, rabbits, and such. Um, up in the distance, you can see this huge mound of fur. As you guys come upon it, you see what looks to be this huge bear, um, a dire bear that's like tw easily twice, three times the size of your typical bear. But the whole thing is just kind of hanging in bits of tattered meat. Vultures kind of swarm around above. Off into the distance as you guys are staring at this uh, disgusting corpse of a bear, you can hear this loud scream, almost like a child in the distance that echoes across the plains coming from the west. Um, he didn't miss much wreck them. All they did was cross the river and they're headed out into the plains. Okay. So uh, at, at the sound of this child's scream, I think John would be inclined to go towards it. Okay. So you guys see John kind of break away yeah. start moving. Um, if you look out across, you don't see anything like on the ground itself. But if you look up, you can see this mass swarm of vultures, maybe about a half a mile in the distance, just circling. Every now and then, one will drop down. Um, so yeah, John, as stealthily as he could, um, kind of try and head in that direction. Okay. Uh, recommend Meryl. 
Well, um, Marrow begins just sprinting towards that um, uh, destination, trying to see um, any victims. Red comes going to follow. All right. So, John, you the as you kind of break off the group and start moving in that direction, you can see the other two following behind you. Um, get a couple hundred yards out, and you can see a little bit of a ring of smoke start trailing up from the ground, moving in that direction. You can see that the earth kind of, almost like a bowl shape, kind of conclaves down in. The weeds and this tall grass kind of thin out a little bit. As you come to the edge and look down, you can see it used to be, at one time, probably a halfling little nomad camp. You can see all their little tents are set up in this little valley-ish sort of area. Um, all the tents, everything is destroyed down here. You see bodies pretty much littering the ground. They all look like they've been butchered. Um, to this, I guess, to your east, off to your left, as you kind of look over, you can see what looks to be a trampled trail of what looks to be like an army of people passed through recently. All the grass is trampled right down. You can see blood trails. Um, you can see um, from where your vantage is, look down, maybe seven or eight halfling bodies, and you can see what looks to be a younger halfling, like a teenage sort of halfling, trying to fight off some of these vultures on top of another one that looks like it's dead already. Yeah. You can hear them like screaming at them, trying to swat at them with sticks, and they'll kind of flutter off only to come back in a few seconds later. All right. Um, so, like, John would look to see if there's anything in the immediate area that looks like it would attack them, aside from, like, the vultures and stuff, like the halflings. And then... Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Give me a perception check, actually. Give yourself one boon. Sure. That is a 11. Nice. Um, you don't see any hostilities around you, but you can definitely see, like, something pass through... Um, as you look around, you do see what looks to be this large, primitive-looking sort of axe. It has like an onyx or a obsidian sort of blade attached to it a little bit. Um, recognize that as an orc. Looks like their kind of skill sets or their craftsmanship. Um, mm -hmm. And then you do kind of spot over him. You do see an orc who looks like he was taken captive or something. There's this large pole that's been driven into the ground, and you can see his hands tied behind his back. He lolls forward like he's dead or unconscious, kind of hanging off this pole. But other, besides him... All you see is this other one half thing alive and everything else is dead. You can definitely see where they left, though. This okay. trampled grass and blood. So, yeah, like, John would definitely, like, take off running towards them, like, you know, trying to grab an, a weapon or anything, like, on the ground as he could. And he would run up and try to help this helper halfling. Right. As soon as you run up, you can see these little vultures kind of scatter. This body that's on the ground in front of you looks like an older male halfling. And then you kind of look over, and you can see the resemblance between this dead one and this uh, younger kid who's kind of just staring back at you. You can see the fear in his eyes for the moment. Uh, recommend Meryl? Um, how far away am I from this? Oh, maybe 100 yards, if that. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start running uh, towards... Uh, yeah, towards the girl. And um, is how big is size one? Size one is like, average. That would be like regular humans, that five to six okay. and a half foot range. Okay. So then um, I'm going to, uh, when I get close enough, I'm going to use um, shape earth and stone and um, make the ground underneath the halfling girl kind of sink down and then put sort of a, you know, a hat like a, kind of lip that comes over the top so that she's kind of protected from above. Okay. Uh, and yeah, just run towards it. Well, you can see this uh, startled expression on her face as this, you know, you kind of collapse this earth in her and stuff and kind of wrap it around her a little bit. Um, she just continues to stare at you, John, for the moment, not really saying anything. You can see, you see the tears kind of streak down her face. It's all covered in dirt. Um, her hands are covered in blood and scars. She has a big uh, gash on her chest. And Retcom? Uh Retcom's going to go uh, toward John as well. Um, he's not sprinting. He's moving, but he's not sprinting. But he's also scanning the horizon to make sure there's no ambush awaiting. Uh, give me a perception challenge roll. Okay. Boons or Banes? Got anything that would help with it? Um, I do, actually. Alertness. Make all perception rolls with one boon, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah. 
16. Nice. When you get down to the other tree and you kind of scan around the slip of this small little enclave in the earth, um, you do see a couple brushes of these uh, grass kind of sway like something was watching right there and it kind of backs itself in. Um, you can see the w way that the grass is kind of parted. There's definitely something sitting there, um, maybe 100 yards out, back up on the lip of this little enclave. So something okay. up there seems to be watching, not making any movement really. So uh, right now I'm, I'm about equidistant from whatever's in the in the grass yeah. and John and where. Right okay. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to continue to war keep an eye on that, but continue to war John Amaro. Okay. See this girl kind of stare at you, John. Uh, she doesn't say anything. She kind of wipes her face with the back of her hand. This doesn't seem to help any, just kind of a smear of blood across her cheek. Doesn't really wipe away any of the dirt. She doesn't say or do anything. She just kind of stares at you. Sure. Um, is this vultures so like around or? They're just circling above. Okay. Um, so yeah, like John would give her like, you know, a scrap of like fabric or whatever, like off of a shirt or a handkerchief or whatever. Like, you know, try and help her like wipe off the blood. And everything. She'll take that. You no, know, what happened? Uh, she kind of wipes lips. My, uh, the orc raiders, they, pa they passed through this morning. They, they took, and then she just kind of begins sobbing into her hands for a few moments. Oh, I think his froze now. Hmm. So, I mean, here, right there. That just sounds well. terrible. And <laughs> John would just continue like, trying to like, wipe off like blood and dirt and everything. Since I'm... If my father, he, he captured one of them. She kind of points across the way oh, you can see this one orc strung up by his hands on this pole. He, he's He's been unconscious uh, since the others left. I, I, th I think I'm the only one left. And I'll, uh, I'll turn to the others and say, um, gentlemen, would you like me to handle this one? Like uh, the other fellow or maybe a different approach? Um, have, has Retcom made it to? Okay, yeah. okay. Um, well, then he's going to bring up. Uh, hey, look! I think uh, I think we're being watched, and then indicate without pointing to where to where he saw movement in in the cover. I see this young little halfling girl look at you and nod. She says, "Oh, yes, yes. It's the uh, the wards." They, they protected us usually, but they, they didn't come out for some reason. Huh. Let's see. She points across the glade to this one, you know, that they have kind of strung up. She says, I... He's not like the others. He, he, he tried to protect my father. Uh, the others uh, ended up capturing him and stringing him up before, you know, more of them came through and and wiped us out. But yeah. The others, I, I saw the other orcs. They, they, when they tried to leave, they just left him behind as if, as if he was just a uh, useless to them or something. Like they didn't care. Interesting. Did you see which way they went when they left? It kind of points up where you can see this clear path that they went through. And, Kind of up back up the enclavement and out through the plains. So it's uh, maybe maybe four hours, four or five hours ago. So then John say, looks uh, at the other two, but we don't go that way. <laughs> <laughs> you say um, this orc tried to help you, protect you. She's my father, and she kind of points to the dead halfling on the ground. They were fighting and. Uh, all of a sudden, the other orcs came in, and he he fought back to back with my father against these other orcs. It, I, I don't understand what. She says it doesn't make any sense. And then some of the halflings, when they left, uh, we we took him as a prisoner. To the, I think they wanted to capture or you know talk to him or something. And then the second raid came through, and she just kind of puts her hands up and kind of motions around you. She says they they didn't leave anything the second time they went through. They, they didn't even care to help their, their friend. They left him 
there on the pole. Oh. Um, Mara will go over to the orc and uh, just without saying anything, just cut the ropes binding him. Let him kind of fall down. Yeah, hits the ground kind of hard. You can see the parched lips. This thing's pretty dehydrated. There's a couple of big gashes on his chest. He looks beat up pretty bad. But he kind of lulls his head about and then opens him, staring back at you for a moment. I can see he doesn't even really have the strength to even fight back if you were to do anything. He just kind of stares at you. I'll offer him some water. Very slowly, almost cautiously, he'll take it. Drink a little bit. Sits there for several minutes, kind of sipping at this water. Then he kind of looks back up at you with these large eyes. Hands this canteen back. Thank you. Why Welcome, you friend. The orc? Friend. Just, I'm nobody's friend. And I'll say, well, um, the reason I help orcs, and I'm walking around him, and then as I pass um, through, like, behind uh, the kind of post he was tied to, I'll change my form into that of um, uh, an old orc. Uh, is a chief that I uh, killed. Uh, although, to kill that chief, I did end up killing an entire village of halflings as well. But, you know, <laughs> my, my goal was achieved. Um, and I'll come back around and kind of crouch in front of him and say, because I am an orc, and just see and enjoy his reaction. Um, give me an agility challenge roll with two banes. Oh, Jesus. Uh, um, that's not very good. Uh, nine. <coughs> As you kind of come past around and you get close and you say that, you can see almost like a sense of hatred on his face. Um, being dehydrated, he's pretty weak in his stuff, but this big, powerful orc, almost in like a flash, the blink of your eye. He grabs you by the throat and kind of throws you to the ground, hovering above you. He says, I've killed more than just one like yourself. And you can see that he kind of reaches behind him, pulling out this blade that he holds in front of your face. He says, what's your name? As he reaches for the blade, he's going to like swing his staff and just clock this dude in the back of the head. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a uh, attack roll. <laughs> he's like he's on, on, on top of it, too, since you're basically surprising him. That is a... 15. Yeah. So just as he kind of brings that blade around and says this to you, Mero, you hear this clunk, and he just kind of falls over to the side unconscious over top of you at the moment. Red, Red come grabs the blade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really nice craftsmanship, but it's about onyx and like a bone hilt and kind of like this piece of obsidian that's been attached to it, but nice for an orc. You can see that small halfling girl run over. She kind of hides behind you, John, peering around your legs at this uh, large, brutish figure laying across another large, brutish figure at the moment. Um, <laughs> I'll stand up and hold out a hand for John and just say, well, I guess that makes us even then. <laughs> Indeed. And John will help you back up. And Could feel a little bit of a tug on your pant leg, Johnny. Look down, you can see this little halfling girl staring up at you. And she says, um, "What did you do that for?" I well, he was gonna that. hurt my friend. I I cannot allow this beast to attack my fellows here. She says, oh. "Well, he he acted like that way towards the other orcs as well. Uh, perhaps he doesn't like orcs." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thought. <laughs> Possibly. He might be onto something there, and then John just kind of like rethink his life decisions. <laughs> he says, I've seen humans that don't like uh, other humans, and dwarves who don't like dwarves. Perhaps orcs don't have to like orcs. All halflings like each other. We're good folk. <laughs> yes, I've, uh, I've heard halflings don't care much for dwarves, though. Uh, it depends on if they bring anything good to eat with them. Fair enough. Do you have a name? Says, uh, I, I did. Did you lose it? Several days ago. 
you want to help finding it? That would be amazing. Um, where did you last see it? This is, well, I was downstairs next to the little hovel on the embankment. She kind of points across the way. You can see what looks to be like a little bit of a um, hole in the ground. It kind of leads down to like a little cavernous area or something. She says, uh, I was playing with my brothers and uh, my, my, my papa, he called out that it was time for dinner and I think I must have left it in there. I haven't been able to find it since. Well, let's go have a look, shall we? And I'll like, hold out a hand for it to hold. Yep, she'll take it and kind of start leading you towards this little hovel in the ground. Let's go have a look see if I can find a name. Uh, John and Reckham, what are you guys up to? So, well, I think John would kind of hang back, definitely, and like he would go about like binding this orc up, so that when he does wake up, right? He's <laughs> yeah, and I'm and uh, I'm still keeping an eye on the uh, on the cover over there, the the friendly wargs who used to help them, but don't, but haven't come out while we've yeah. been here, are still there. So, um, yeah, kind of glance around. You can definitely see where this grass is still kind of parted a little bit and knowing what you're looking for. It definitely seems like there's still something there that's watching. You don't see it yet, but it's it's there. By the time you get this orc all kind of bound back up to this pole, John, you can see he kind of shakes his head a little bit and then glares back up at you. It says, where's the orc? The chieftain. Um, you he's... don't understand. He'll kill us all. No, he... no, What's that? Yeah. The uh, chief is currently unavailable, but um, never draw steel on my friends again. Says if you side with the orcs, then I'll kill you as well. I side with no one. Uh, all I know is that you want to attack my friend. He threatened me first. Well, yeah, he does that sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> is he so, the one of the white hands? The, the white hands. What is this white hands speak of? You can see he kind of lifts his hands up and on his hands. Almost, it almost looks like he kind of put his hand in like wet paint or something on the palm of each hand. He says, the orcs are the white hands. Do you not know of them? I myself do not know. Then I don't believe he's one of them. I'll have to kill him. <laughs> well. He says, you're in grave danger if you travel with the orcs like that. I just be your friend for a short while, but when you sleep, he'll slit your throat, just like they all do. Well, if all orcs slit throats, then we should slit your throat now and be done with you. He says, but you're not an orc. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> so I am one of the ones with the white hand. And he kind of holds his hands again like this has some sort of importance. He says, it is my duty to slay them all, to kill all the bastards, to give us a wrong name. Not all orcs are evil. Exactly. Not all orcs are evil. I can agree with not hands all. are not. Tell you what, you want to come with us and you want to kill more orcs. That's fine. No more attacking me or my friends here. <laughs> Since then I have to see the hands of your friend. I'm sure that he will happily show you his hands. That is not an issue. So then unbind me. Uh, so he has my blade and my axe is gone. What would I do to the likes of you? And John would just kind of look around like, uh, uh, all right, makes sense, I suppose. And then he would go about untying the bindings again. I have crushed many skulls, but <laughs> I won't do that for you. All right, okay. And then uh, I would motion my big old friend wreck him here and... Uh, yeah, and then John runs away. <laughs> <laughs> well, Redcomb's going to ask him. Um, I mean, if he is going with us after the other orcs, I mean, you know, he needs to be armed. So he's going to point out that I think I saw your axe 
back that way where we saw the uh, the big obsidian uh, cleaver. And, yes. and he'll also ask him, so what do you know about what's washing us from the, uh, from the weeds over there? He looks over and says, the halflings, most of the nomads, protected by the warg, uh, the spirit of the grass. He says, strange that the beast didn't come out when the orcs were here. He says, I, I tried to get here in time to save them, but um, I'm only one orc. My comrades were killed. Huh. A civil war of sorts. Says I don't believe they thought I was helping them at first. Uh, the halflings were quite rabid. Killed several of my comrades before I could get them under control to explain the situation. But it was already too late. The reavers came through, and the warg didn't even come out from the grasses. Huh. Well. Go collect your axe. Can we go uh, kill your orc comrade? <laughs> I don't think you'll have to. So then he must have the white hands. Um, if he does not have the hands, it is my duty to slay him. Oh, he, he may or may not have the hands. Next time you see him, he may have something completely different. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> And see, he reaches down into a pouch and brings out what looks to be the sort of milky colored liquid in a vial. As he starts to walk away, he downs that. You can see these stitchings on his back. These wounds kind of start to heal up a little bit. This big uh, kind of tuft of hair kind of grows out from his chest along his shoulders. Uh, he looks like his muscles kind of expand a little bit, a little bit bigger, heavier set. And he reaches over, picking off this axe off the ground and turn around. says, I'm ready. Let's go find your friend. So after he picks this axe up, John would kind of just walk over to him, like reach out a hand, like no hard feelings, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this huge orc hand just engulfs pretty much your entire forearm up to your elbow, and he gives you a bit of a shank. Feels like it's kind of ripping your arm out of socket. For the first time, you see this orc smile, this huge, toothy sort of smile. These big canines that kind of hang down and jut over the corner of his overbite lip. There, <laughs> the name is Junk. Well, well, Junk, I'm John, and uh, my other friend here is Mr. Reckham, and uh, well, the other guy, he kind of walked away. His name's Marrow, so welcome to the party. Since I, I had another friend named Rectum. He was a good man. <laughs> good orc. <laughs> man, we are killing it. Porridge, Re <laughs> Rectum. <laughs> Shake his head. He says, uh, this orc is named Marrow. Fitting name for an orc. Let's go find him. I need to check his palms. Uh, like, hey, Farba, what's the name of that restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> you can see this orc kind of glances around. He says, uh, where did he go? He uh, walked away with the little wee one. I don't know where they went, actually. You can see his eyes kind of widen a little bit and he kind of glances around seeing that bit of a hovel in the ground in the distance as you kind of take this young girl in your hand Meryl go down you can see when you get there it's almost like a carved steps right into the earth and it goes down into this nice cool uh, nice a very fresh smelling sort of cavern and you walk down these steps it goes down maybe 15 feet or so you can see a soft warm orange glow in the distance as you kind of Come down and walk around the corner a little bit, and you see this large cavernous area. All sorts of small halfling toys that have been kind of covered together with twigs and reeds and stuff like that are scattered out on the ground. Um, you can see what looked to be four halflings. All of them are pretty much mutilated around the floor of this building. Um, it looks almost like maybe a community center or something like that. Um, up back up above, you see Junk kind of just make a full-on beeline run towards this. He says, you must hurry. So yeah, John would like struggle to keep up as best he could. <laughs> I'm assuming this guy's just like trucking it, and John's like, <laughs> yeah, just one stride is like four of yours. Um, you come down into this basement, Meryl, and you know, you kind of see this little girl. She says, and she points ahead. You can see what looks to be a little chest in the middle of the room, a little table that's beside it. She says, I was 
playing with my toys, my brother. And she kind of looks around like she's looking for him. And then she kind of goes back. Uh, and, and, and when Papa called for dinner, we, we hurried to eat. It was, uh, you know, lamb squash and uh, some sort of bison meat. It was, it was a, dis a delightful dinner. He says, but uh, I, I must have left my name here somewhere. She kind of looks around. She, she walks forward and starts kind of pushing some stuff out of the way, looking. Yeah. I'll, uh, you said there was a chest? Yeah. I'll fucking open the chest, won't I? Oh, yeah. Go over. You kind of open the thing up. You can see it has a whole bunch of cooking utensils, spatulas, and metal ladles and stuff like that, and like cheese graters and odds and ends. Looks like just basically campware. Um, with that, though, I do need to know your agility. Know it. Yeah. 11. Yeah. So as you're looking through these, just from the corner of your eye, you see a bit of movement. You kind of glance over. You can see one of these mutated, mutilated little halflings kind of come forward, this heavy metal ladle in its hand, and it just strikes you right across the face. Uh, three damage. Is that a, a zombie halfling, could you say? Yep, basically. You know, it just strikes you across the face. You can feel this heavy slap against the side of your head by this metal ladle. <laughs> Over to the side, you can see these other ones start to move and much faster than what you would think these little things can move. They're like on you like a horde in a few seconds. You can see this little girl that you're helping climbing up your pant leg. These other two are coming in for their own ladles. Uh, one of them has this huge, looks like one of these orc acts that is kind of dragging across the floor behind it. And with that, we'll enter initiative for you. Um, you guys are at least two movements out. Um, sure. we, I don't know, does uh, Meryl yell or do anything? Um, yeah. So she's she's clearly not in league with these zombies, right? She's, like, scared of them. Oh, no, she's climbing up your pant leg. Well, I don't know, it's hard to tell, actually. She's just climbing up your pant leg at the moment, though. Is, is she... Okay, I, can I look down and see if she's, like, snarling and trying to bite me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see where her eyes once was are just black pits. You can see this blood, yeah. blood kind of pouring down her face, these long black nails on each of your hands. Um, her feet have almost taken on this uh, very primal looking appearance. Bits of fur kind of sprout across her chest, the back of her head. And yeah, she's totally within league with them, it seems to be. She's crawling up your leg. Okay. Right. <laughs> um. Crush right. her head, man. Crush her head. Crush her. Um, <laughs> I. Okay, yeah. First, um, I uh, will kind of reach down and just touch the uh, the floor. And you see, um, well, none of you see, but I guess the zombies see um, kind of the stone from the floor sort of begin creeping up my uh, form and sort of encasing me. Um, and then kind of sinking into my skin and sort of just covering me in this stone. Um, I'm going to cast stone armor. All right. So attacks against me have a bane, and I only take half damage. And then when it finishes, it explodes, and everything nearby has to make a, an agility save. Yeah, uh, remind me about damage. the bane. Will do. Um, yeah, and then uh, I guess I went fast, so that's my that's my action. All right. Are you yelling or anything that the others can hear you, or you no? Know? Um, I'll say, I'll shout, come quick, I think I found her name. <laughs> See this huge orc just pick up speed as he's running across this enclave right past you, Rick, come John, huffing on his feet behind him for the best he can. You can hear Marrow yell in the distance, his voice kind of echoing out of this hole in the ground. Yep. Run right. through the hole in the ground. You guys have at least two movements to reach to him, so he already went fast. Um, would you guys like to go fast or slow? Um, I mean, I guess really it doesn't matter because fast you move the same as slow anyway. It's just the extra yeah. action if you want to take if you have something like a spell or something to cast. But uh, I don't think I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm just gonna go fast. Yeah, John's just running for it. All right. So you guys, up, so you got four other little halflings. Well, this one that's climbing up your pant leg that's climbing you, she has a bane. Mm -hmm. And that would be... What is your defense? Uh, my defense is 12. Okay, so that's a miss. And then there's three other ones. Two more with ladles is a miss. And a that one will be a hit for 
only one. Um, but you do see this Ouch. other one. Yep, one hit you for one. So one just kind of smacks, just as your armor is starting to kind of creep up your body. Gives you a quick smack in the face with the end of this ladder before it kind of cases your nose. You can feel your nose kind of smush against your face. This one that's clawing up your leg, though, you can see these long black talons as they just kind of pierce, trying to get through the bit of this uh, stone armor you have. So she's she's not a zombie like the others? No. Um, and that will be a hit, though, too. All right. So yeah, you can see, and she, all these black claws kind of sink into your leg where this armor, the stone has kind of started to form up your leg. And she literally takes a piece of the stone and pulls it off. But you can see your flesh underneath getting peeled away by this piece of the stone that she's ripping in, you know, kind of like ripping off of your leg. It'll immediately start to kind of crawl back up your leg, this stone armor. But she just tears right into you. It's going to be nine damage on that one. Is that half? Uh, no, it's not. So five. That would be the end of that round. So, start the actual proper initiative. Who would like to go fast? You guys are still okay. one movement away. Fast. Uh, fast again. Yep. Okay. Um, Reckham and John, are you guys doing anything besides running? No. Drawing weapons. It's getting there. All right. Um, behind you, you can hear this heavy thudding coming down these steps behind you. Mero, as you turn, you see this huge orc, this long black obsidian battle axe in his hands. As he kind of looks around, seeing you covered in these things, you can see he's stares at you still a little bit, like he's trying to figure out what, you know, what about you. Um, he's going to go slow because he's not sure what to do. So, Mero, you are up first. Are you going so, fast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah first. I'll, I'll say to him, uh, stay back for now. Um, and how many could I get in a cone in front of me? Oh, I'll say, well, the ones on you, ones beside you, so I'll say the other three. So, yeah, three. Is that including the uh, the creepy demon the one that's girl? On you, yes. I, she's kind of crawling okay. up. Yeah. I figured she'd be kind of caught in that. And then the two um, moving towards you with ladles. Yeah, all right. Well, they all need to make uh, agility challenge rolls or saves or whatever it is um as i kind of step back take a really deep breath and just exhale um blowing this freezing wind that kind of crystallizes into these massive chunks of ice that just batter them uh cast avalanche all right um let's see agility challenge rolls success success that was a sick roll. One they failed. Succeeded. One oh. failed. Um, <laughs> I rolled. I rolled really well though. Uh, two sixes, a five, and a three. Uh, so twenty-one points of damage. Oh. Okay. Well, you can just tell. Not the one that's on you. The past, but one of the ones coming up with a ladle in front of you. You can see these things move extremely deftly. Kind of quickly slinking out of the way, dodging to the ground. One of them kind of leaps up against the wall and kind of catapult itself off of it. Um, one is caught in your attack, though, which is going to be completely destroyed because it only had nine hit points, so you can describe what you do to this poor thing. Yeah, so, like, these kind of massive chunks of ice are sort of flying at these things, battering them, but um, one of them, particularly big and sort of cone-shaped, just embeds itself in the guy's face, and he just goes flying back and, like, is pinned to the wall by this just massive spiked <laughs> hunk of ice. Nice. Uh, let's see. You see the two of them behind... Yeah, the two that were behind you kind of break off from you as they turn towards this other orc and rush towards him. Um, Wait, Morgan, just a quick question. Um, I'm using stone armor as a concentration spell. What does that mean in regards to casting other spells and taking damage? That is a good question. I haven't messed with concentration. I want to say you can't... Um, well, if I went to the others, you want to look that up real quick? Uh, if you take damage or gain insanity while you're concentrated, I have to make a will challenge roll. On a failure, I stop oh. concentrating. Okay. So, so stuff. Yeah. It, it works the same as 5e, but I need to make a will challenge roll. Okay. Uh, to keep the effect up. Thank oh, you. I, I do not keep the effect up. Uh -oh. That's a 6. <laughs> Which actually is a pretty good thing, because when the effect ends... Which you just Truth. did. Um, big explosion happens. Yeah, what do I need the, to? The agility I'm challenge rolls. Time bomb. Uh, yeah, agility challenge rolls. 
Uh, let's see. Success. That's a fail. Success and success. So I've got one of them again. Yeah, so if they succeeded, it's eight or oh, four points of damage. If they failed, it's two. No, other way around. If they fail, it's four points. If they succeed, it's two points. Got it. So. Is there friendly fire in the shadow of the demon lord? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm glad that happened before everyone turned up. I just got the <laughs> asshole orc. <laughs> We're coming um, to help you. Boom. <laughs> Uh, he failed too, but that's okay. Good. Dick. <laughs> all right. So yeah, you can see all these shards of glass or stone embed themselves in several of these little halfling things. Uh, one of them takes the brunt of it, though. The one right in front of you with the ladder, a couple of huge stones, bits of shrapnel kind of embedding themselves in his chest and in his leg. Um, so I will do the two on the orc are done. So you have a two with a ladle on you first, which is going to be a one and a one, so that's a total miss. A total miss. So you can see these other two with these heavy iron ladles just kind of swinging away, trying to club at you. When your stone thing kind of goes off, blowing them back out of the way a little bit. The one keeps a continual hold on you, though, as well. It's going to hit you again. Uh, you can see her kind of crawl up, scurrying across your back, these long talons sinking in as she kind of gets a hold of you. You can feel one of her claws kind of come around, catching you on the corner of the face and just start tearing at your face. That's going to be six more points of damage. And with that, this orc is up. Seeing you getting attacked by two things, two of them move towards him. The first one, he just completely cuts right in half with this quick swing of his axe. He kind of severs this thing across the ground. The other one, he turns to and he kind of grabs it by the face, lifts it off the ground. That would be the end of that round. So, who would like to go fast? You guys would be coming down the steps and see uh, Junk, the severed halfling next to him on the ground. His blade are kind of bloodied up, and he's holding this other one in the air with his hand, looking at it. You can see he's kind of looking at the halfling and then looking back at uh, Mero, who's this orc chieftain type guy right now, trying to see what he should do. Looks a little confused. Over on the side, you can see Mero, this one smaller halfling girl that you guys were talking to, almost like monkey climbing all over his body, these long black talons as she's tearing at his face. Two more are swinging wildly with these big iron ladles at him. Yeah, but uh, I'm going fast, and and we're we're there now, right? Yeah, we're we're okay. Yep. Um, I'm going to go to help Marrow. Um, fast. Fast. Okay. Yeah, I'll go fast as well. All right. Um, do 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 do. With that, this little thing's going to go fast before you can. Mero. So this, she just <laughs> continues to clamber around your body. She kind of comes around the front, comes on almost face to face with her. You can see this is black pits in her eyes, tiny little pinpoints of red. And that would be another hit. Did she bite me or is she like stabbing me? No, with this one, you can see these long black nails and she just kind of grabs you on the side of the face. You can feel them tear right through the side of your skull and she kind of holds on and her face comes in these long, almost translucent like teeth. Her mouth opens absurdly wide as she clamps down right directly on your face. That's nine points of damage. Oh, I'm still up. You can see <laughs> she's just literally trying to eat his face off at this point. So, so see Marrow is like, he's the kind of person who would always save himself. He is really pissed off at her. So I, I was going to do something that I, I think it might be like funnier and cooler if I, no, no. He, um, Marrow is thinking about biting her back, but then realizes that, you know, even though he has sort of orc teeth or whatever, he's probably not the best. So he's just going to escape. Um, so I'll use fold space. Um, and just teleport five yards backwards. Um, try and sort of get her off me. Okay. Um, yeah, you can see him blink out and then reappear a few little ways back from where he is. She kind of falls to the ground on all four. She kind of looks up. You guys see this very feral-like creature in place of where she once was. She immediately starts to move across the floor back towards uh, Mero. All the while, she has this really high-pitched sort of cackling laughter. 
and let's see, recommend John, you guys are up. Yeah, Red Kim's going to kill that thing. <laughs> She's a kooky bitch. Yeah, he's going to try to uh, uh, offer with his black steel blade. Um, now, if she's, do I get a, do I get an, uh, a boon or anything if she's going away from me or? Oh, she's kind of moving towards you a little bit. I mean, okay. she knows you're there, so. Gotcha. Okay. So just the, uh, just the one boon from weapon training then. Yep. Okay. And so 13. That'll be a miss. Ah, And John, so you kind of swipe as soon as you swipe. I'm sorry, as soon as you swipe Retcom, she just completely, she just kind of like does that little parkour slide underneath your blade, almost Matrix style, before getting back up and leaps through the air to get towards uh, Meryl. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. This is one that just attacked Meryl. John is very pissed off at this because, well, he's rather fond of Meryl. So <laughs> he's just going to like aim his hand like straight out at this thing, just like palm out at it, and he's just going to like. This fiery burst of light is just going to shoot from his palm. And will attack for a 18 against this thing's agility. Uh, yep, that's a hit. All right, and that is 1d6 damage for... Uh, I can't count today. Uh, four damage. So she's kind of... You caught her as she was sort of like mid-leap when this fiery blast hit the chest. She goes flying across the floor, kind of tumble. Barrel rolls a little bit across the floor before coming back up. This huge scorch mark on her chest, still kind of burning with embers a little bit. Um, the other two, let's see. They're going to sw- jump in. Uh, seeing you kind of attack with her, or attack at her wreck come. You see these other two kind of crawl across the floor, these heavy ladles in hand that they're going to start swinging with. Oops. And let's see, 21 and 19. Both hits, I believe. Uh, oh, only for shit. five points of damage, though, Retcom. So, yeah, they just come in. They just start bludgeoning you in the crotch and against the kneecaps with these large iron ladles pounded Fuck into you. Fuck a bunch you. of halflings, man. Fuck a bunch of halflings. You hear this? <laughs> we have to decide that halflings are now kill on sight for us. Yeah, they are. Seriously. Right. Just, you hear this sickening Would you like crunch. the soup? <laughs> they make really good soup, guys. <laughs> you hear this sort of sickening crunch and kind of glance over your shoulder. You can see this one junk was holding just crush his skull, just drop it to the ground. His shoulders up his axe and starts moving towards um, Marrow. This is, let me see your hands. Your hands, let me see your hands. <laughs> 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 just, just the palms, the palms of your hand. You can see he kind of shoulders up his blade, getting ready to swing it towards you. Um. Okay. First palm nasty with like all this stuff, so that they look white. <laughs> yeah, Redcom Redcom yells out. He wants to see your white palms, Marrow. I I like being a changeling. I can't paint my palms with my power. I imagine right. no. So. Is it do it? Is it my like turn? Can I like do an action <laughs> sort of thing? Um, if I'm going fast. He was going. Uh, technically, yeah, because that would be because he killed the halfling and was moving towards you. So yeah, it, you, it, it, I guess it'd be fast. Who wants to go fast first? Yeah, I'll, I'll go fast. All right. There you go. So as he says that, I I put them palm down and say, look, I'll turn them over, and I kind of hold them out and down, so he has to sort of bend over. And then when he bends over, I just want to try and like kick him in the face and run off. <laughs> All right. And just do the sort of look, bang. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you kind of put him down. He does kind of take a notice, at least to where these other halflings are, but seeing that they're caught up with uh, Ratcom at the moment, and he killed that one. Let me mark that off. And the other one's kind of crawling back towards you. He'll definitely leap over. If you want to give him a tech, I'll give you one boon on top of that. Oh. It was a five, but I got a six on the boon, so uh, do I get to add my strength or anything to that? Um, yeah, add your strength. His armor class is a 12, or I guess his defense is a 12. Oh, I rolled a 12. Okay, Jeez. so you're on. With your strength modifier, yeah. right? Yeah, so okay. it would be a, an 11 if I didn't get my strength modifier. Yeah, so I um, I just boot him. Or do you want like a D3, D2 yeah, damage? Yeah, just a D3. 
Uh, I didn't even want to. Yeah, two damage. So you bring your knee up. It catches him right in the face. You see his head kind of snap back. A little bit of blood kind of fly over his shoulder, splattering against one of these halflings that's nailing Retcom in the crotch. Uh, Retcom and John, you guys are up. I'm I'm gonna try to I'm the look there the fuck a bunch of dead zombie or dead uh, halflings man I'm I'm attacking these things of course the one that's the one that's closest to me or has done the most damage whichever that uh, would apply to you uh, well there's two both next to you and they both have the same damage so it doesn't matter go for okay. it these guys' defense is a twelve these little ones okay nineteen that's it no 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 okay. Um, And that would be nine damage. Oh, geez. You can describe what you do to kill a poor little guy. Okay. Well, the uh, the one to my le- to my left. He's totally the, the lateral crotch kicker, dude. No, oh, absolutely. I uh, draw back my my black steel blade and just shove it through his face. Nice. You hear the second <laughs> crunch. His head kind of slides off your blade to the ground. His lateral rolling across to your foot. Uh, John, there's right, so. one halfling left on Mero, this very primal looking one that's getting ready to leap towards um, Mero there, and then the one that's on John and the orc. Okay. So I'm assuming this orc looks rather pissed off at this point. Oh, yes. You can see he's getting ready to <laughs> take a swipe with his blade. All right. So this here says, I can use an action to enter a state of divine ecstasy that lasts for one minute. So I'm assuming that's like a fast action then. Yeah, that's kind of a bonus action, basically, like a trigger type. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that then for this divine ecstasy thing. Okay. Um, and then do I still get an action, like, after that, or is that just, like, a... Uh, what ability is that? Um, Divine what? ecstasy. It's for the oracle path. Um, I th- think that takes your action. Let me double-check real quick. It says you can use an action to enter a state of divine ecstasy. Yeah. Last one. So yeah, it takes yeah. Well, that would be your action. Um, if you have anything that takes a triggered action, you could still do that, but that would be your action. No. Okay. All right. So yeah, like John's just gonna look around, like see that you know the situation is unfolding very badly as this orc is very large and pissed off now. <laughs> um, as you do look around, you can hear like a slumpy sort of sound behind you. John, you kind of glance back the stairwell that led down into this little chamber. You you can see where this heavy furry. A uh, kind of mutated claw kind of slapped down on a step, and you can hear it's almost like something's dragging itself. And then another claw is this large, almost wolf like creature, six legs, has two large heads. Um, it's just covered in these huge open sores and blisters, is dragging itself down the stairwell. It looks like the back four legs have all been twisted and kind of mutated enough that they're not working, so it only has its front two that it just slaps down and then pulls itself forward and slaps down, and pulls itself forward. Great. Uh, and with that, everybody went fast, so we have the little primal one is going to be leaping towards you, Mero. <laughs> and that's going to be a hit for six damage. So Mero, this thing after, being forward, you can feel it. Himself, you can feel it kind of himself extremely clever for uh, booting this orc. It's just fucked from behind by this little halfling bastard that drops. <laughs> Yeah, you guys see her just kind of leap through, clambering on top of his back. Um, you can see just kind of blood just spilling down his back, down his shoulders. This uh, marrow collapses forward. This uh, huge orc, you can see, kind of shoulders his blade and kind of lifts it up like he's getting ready to be head. Uh, marrow. Um, and we have one more little lad old dude on top of you, which is going to be a mess. That will be the end of the round. And at the end of this round, you'll have to make a death save unless somebody helps you, Mero. Uh, Rhett, come down. You guys like to go fast or slow? Um, I'll go fast and take out the remaining zombie halfling fuckwit. All righty, go for it. Ah. Oh, 21. Yep. Okay. And- Assuming you do more than three damage, he's dead. I uh, did seven. Yeah. So, Go ahead. Yep. Okay, so after pulling my black steel blade out of the face of the previous casualty, I pull it back and and in a in a smooth arc 
decapitate the other one and kick his corpse over because I hate zombie halflings at this point more than fucking anything. <laughs> I hate zombie halflings more than I hate gnomes. And that's fucking saying something. <laughs> fuck See, swing your blade around the star because you kind of turn and you had this last second one. You come around to kind of face that stairwell where this thing is pulling itself down. It's about the size of a large horse or a bear pulling itself down a stairwell. Um, John? What would you like to do? All right. You see this orc is getting ready to pretty much behead your buddy. Yeah, totally. So um, at this point, like John would look up, see this like orc about to like behead him, and yeah, fuck it. So John's just gonna take his staff and he's just gonna like just chuck it like end over end at this thing, like trying to like hit him, distract him, knock his weapon out, something. Okay. Um, do a normal attack. I'll say with an agility and give yourself one boon because. You're fa facing his back, basically. That is a sweet. That is a not natural twenty. Nice. Um, do you want to knock his axe out of his hands, or do you want to hit him? Which one do you want to do? Um, I would like to knock his axe out. Okay. Right. So you can see that he gets up and he kind of gets ready, getting ready to bring this thing down. As your staff just kind of comes through, maybe clocking him right across the wrist or something, so this axe just kind of falls clattering just inches away from your buddy's face. This whole blade sparks kind of fly off the. Um, blade under the stone below. Behind it, you can hear this whole place just erupt in this huge roar as this thing lets out the scream behind you that pulls itself down the stairwell. Um, let's see, the orc is up. You can see his head snap around at face to you, John, as he kind of gives you this uh, how dare you sort of look. Um, but see that other little halfling primal thing, he's going to jump on him, so he's going to be distracted at the moment. And there you go. So I need a death save from poor Mero. <laughs> what am I trying to get? Just above ten. Is it? Uh, nope. It's going to be a one d six, and you don't want a one. Oh. Oh. oh that's a two. <laughs> You're good for the moment. You can see he's just kind of very shallow, breathing on the ground. This blade inches from his throat. Um. And with that, it's the end of the round. You can see there's, you see this little primal halfling thing, whatever it is, kind of leaping towards uh, Junk, trying to get a hold of him. It kind of clambers up his pant like he's swatting at this thing like crazy, trying to get it off of him. Um, behind you, right come just a few feet away, this thing kind of pulls itself into the chamber. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it would be just a few feet away from you too, is uh, John. So you guys are up. Uh, well, uh, I, I'm going to turn and face this uh, eldritchy, horror-y looking thing. Uh, or try to, anyway. <laughs> try to, anyway. Um, I mean, it's not here for tea. No, no. It's, you can see that it's <laughs> quite enraged, uh, especially every time you killed the halfling that looked a little more pissed off. So Okay, well, good then. If it's mad about that, then I'm mad at it. So uh, let's let's uh, let's start on uh, start in on it. I'm gonna go fast. All righty, uh, Rhett comes fast. Uh, John, um, John's gonna go slow, I guess, because like he he would want to move to Marrow and then try and do an action to hit him. So. Yep. Uh, let's see. Junk is going to go fast. So let me do Junk's first real quick. You can see he's just trying to bat this little halfling thing off of him like crazy. Ugh. And yeah, he kind of gets a hold of her, kind of from the back of her scruff, and lifts her up and kind of hurls her across the room. You can hear the sticking and crunch as she hits the wall and slides down. Uh, she kind of shakes, almost like a wet dog, a little bit. Her whole body shaking. She kind of, you know, tries to regain her senses a little bit, and then she bounds across the floor, uh, back towards him. Uh, she's gonna go slow though. Definitely. So that leaves John. You are up, or I'm sorry, Reckham. Okay. Um, let's attack the, uh, creepy crawly thing. All right. Oh, this is going to be good. 20. That's a hit. All right. So, for eight damage. Damn, nice. Got it. Yeah. So when you open up a big gash, can kind of like in between these two heads, that little clavicle area right in between, you can just pours out this uh, sickly sort of green kind of color blood that kind of spills across the floor. And these two heads roar in return. Uh, they're going to go fast. 
and attack you. So Daggers. So you 19 and 17. That'll be a 5 and 7, so what, 7, 13 damage, Rickham. Okay. Uh, both of these huge maws, one kind of grabs a hold of your leg, starts to pull you in, the other one gets hard over your sort of your breast area, and you're caught in between these two things. I need a strength saving throw to see if you're grappled, though. Um, it's going to be with two banes. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm extra, negative three. I'm <laughs> yeah. extra grappled. Nice. So, yeah, these two mouths pull you in, one getting a hold of your kind of your lower right leg, the other one in your breast, and they both kind of pull you in. You can see their heads kind of shake back and forth, almost like they're trying to rip you apart. Uh, one of these huge claws that it has kind of comes up, kind of pinning your other leg down onto the floor, literally trying to rip your limbs from your body. <laughs> nice. And let's see, uh, John, you are up. Yeah, John's going to, like, basically jump and, like, try and tuck and roll or whatever, like, to get to Marrow. Um, the whole time, like, trying to tell Junk, like, his, like, yelling at him, like, trying to tell him, like, we're not your enemy. Like, this guy is not an orc. Just give me a minute to help him and explain. <laughs> you see Junk look over. Um, when you get down like that, you turn into your more natural, uh, kind of deformed, twiggy, leafy sort of changeling appearance anyway. So he would see that he's yeah. a changeling. I, I was about to ask about that because it doesn't yeah. really say in the books. Is it is it like um, the classic sort of blue skin thing or is it like um, – Nope, they are – they look more Native American y as they're like made out of twigs and leaves yeah. and strange internally things and stuff. Yep. Almost like he's made of wicker type thing. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. And then I don't know exactly how the mechanics work, but I would also like to try and like heal Marrow has in there. All right. You got a spell you're using or medicine like skill? Uh, minor healing, tradition life. Okay. Yeah. So you just use that as an action and I think it heals healing rate or uh, half healing rate? Half the healing. So, so take half your healing rate, Mero, and you would be waking up. So if you want to take a slow action, you still can. Okay, yeah. So I awake, kind of look around and see that I'm in the kind of not my presentable form. And I'll just immediately turn. Um, Show them your hands. Show them your hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I immediately turn into um, this uh, goblin. And I look... Um, as though it's like got black skin, but if you look closely, you actually see that it's just covered in tattoos. And uh, out of character, this was uh, Marrow's kind of agent um, when he was sort of working as a t assassin type uh, guy. And this is the person who sort of was the go-between uh, who Marrow killed. Um, but <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think it's just my action to turn into uh, something. So I'll just like turn into a different creature and sort of. Roll away. All right. Nice. Um, and this little primal thing is still left up. So just as from the corner of your eye, you can see this thing moving beside you. Um, John, I need an agility challenge roll this time with one bane from you. Yeah, sure. That is a 11. 11, nice. So you can see she kind of bounds across the floor, and with like the swipe of this little clawed hand, scrapes it across the ground. You can see all these little sparks and the bits of shrapnel and stone and stuff kind of erupt from the floor, almost just like jutting towards you. You're only going to take half damage, so one point of damage. There's a few of these shards embed themselves in your skin. She lets out this bit of a screech and then just makes the rest of her movement, and she runs towards you, grabbing a hold of your leg and starting to crawl up your leg. And the end of that round... Who would like to go fast? Retcom is over at the base of the stairwell, being torn limb from limb by this huge wolf-like horror thing. And Junk is under the side. Um, you have just the other little halfling, little primal halfling is crawling up John's leg. Uh, I'll go fast, please. Yeah, John will go fast. He'll be like trying to beat this thing in the face, get it off of him. <laughs> All right, Retcom. I, I, I want, what can I do? If I'm grappled between two, you know, how, <laughs> how many, what, what kind of actions can I take? <laughs> if you take any actions, because you're considered grappled, so you're going to get a bane to everything you do. Um, to break free is either going to be a strength or agility change roll. Your choice, which one you want. Um, well, can I, can I use catch my breath and, yep, then, and, then, action. and then try to escape? Yep. Okay, well, let's do that. So first catch my breath. Um, 
You'll heal your healing rate for that one. Yes, which is thing, gives, gives me a slight chance of surviving this round. Um, and then, what do you say? A, a strength challenge roll. Yep, strength or agility, whichever one. Strength or agility. Uh, agility. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna have one bane to it because you're grappled. I don't know if you have something that helps you. Um, that's what I'm trying to see. Either ability or a profession. Um, profession, uh, boatman, ferryman, pickpocket, mercenary, nomad, vagabond, not really profession. How about, well, I need to remember, well, that's for boons only, though. Um, determined, but no. Uh, you guys have one fortune point, which can give you an auto success or help somebody out with boons. Um, or heal um, your healing, right? I have a path ability that will help you to heal, I think, if you're within short range of me, if you want to. I think you can uh, grant them a boon, too. You have the priest ability to grant somebody a boon. Yeah. Well, I, now, here's – this is sort of – I mean, it's – it's. I'm going to try to make an agility challenge roll to escape. Okay. Now, on, on the scout expert path, I do have quick reflexes, which you can use a triggered action on your turn to hide or retreat. Now, of course, I'm grappled. But, I, you know, quick reflexes might help with an agility roll. I don't know. Yeah, I'll give you that one on this one. In this okay, case. so cancel the cancel the bane in that case. Yep. So then it'll be a straight up. And John would totally grant you the boon if I can. I'm... Yep, you can. You got that every round. I forgot you're a priest. You can do that every round. You can grab somebody a boon. Okay, so actually I have one boon on the roll. Yep. Okay. Well, that's actually joy of joys. <laughs> Eighteen. Yep. And that is against its. Strength, which is, I want to say a 16. Yeah, you're good. Woo! <laughs> so how do you pull yourself free, or what do you do? Um, you're going slow, so you can still have your action, too, if you want. You'll consider that a move. Oh, that's right, because Catch My Breath was a triggered action. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay, well, in that case, to get free, um, I the, the head on the side that's holding my leg down I'm going to kick that. I'm kicking up at its chin with my other leg. So that'll get me free of that side and then do some sort of acrobatic <laughs> flip that I could not possibly do in, in real life uh, to, to kind of put some, some space between, uh, between me and it. All right. And then I have one action left. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. You triggered and you moved your move, so you got your regular action left. Uh, I just need to attack. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to attack oh, and try not to get uh, grappled by two snarling wolf heads again. Um, and let me see. That would be with. That would be a 19, 13 plus 6 on the boon. Uh, yep, that's it. Yay. Okay, so. Oh, I just missed Forceful Strike. If I would had a 20 total, I'd have gotten another 1d6 damage. Oh, well. Oh, 9, though. I'll take it. 9, that's pretty good. So 6 and 3. So you just kind of back up, just kind of swiping your blade, trying to make some distance in between these. You catch one of them right across the nose area and just kind of open up this huge gas across its face. Um, you can see its claws dig into the stone and pull itself forward. Um, let's see, John, Mero, everybody went, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I haven't been. Oh, okay. I must have brought you in the Oh, wrong that's spot. right. You're still alive. Yeah, I go back I'm up. Sorry. I must have brought you in the wrong <laughs> spot. Go for it. Okay, so um, you can see him fighting this thing, and Junk has this little primal halfling crawling up his body. Yeah, fucking good. Um, <laughs> Maro <laughs> is uh, he's infuriated because no one, no one gets to see him when he's not looking his best. So um, I'm gonna fucking um, I'm gonna cast Color of Magic on uh, this motherfucker, which. I think from where I am, 
will hit me, um, but will also hit Junk and the uh, the woman because it's like an, an explosive type thing. Okay. So basically, I roll a d6 plus one. If the number on the d6 is odd, then it's another three d6 damage. All right. So it's so does Junk get hit with this too because I was right there? <laughs> oh yeah, John's right uh, there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> let me let me just uh, check this spell quick. John is really good. He think you think he could handle it. <laughs> okay, uh, one yard radius sphere. So I'm I'm right there because I haven't been able to move yet. Yeah, but I don't know if you're like within a yard. Um, his spell that he cast was touch, so he'd be right there beside you. Shit, man. Well, is I'm there any way I could like animal thing? You know. Put it to one side so the edge catches. Or, <laughs> well, no, I probably, if I'm being honest, I probably wouldn't. Yeah. Um, because, well, you know. It's, if it's you're that fast, too. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, like, because I've just woken up, I'm like, oh, big spell. That's what I'm thinking. So if I kill you, I'll feel really bad. That's Rob speaking. Um, oh, that's Out of five. character, I think I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, that's a five. Which means the extra three d six happen. <laughs> Shit. Um, okay. So eleven, fifteen, sixteen points of damage. Oh, it's just this explosion of like color and stuff. Um, which, All if right. it hits me, which it's a yard, and I'm right there, so I guess it does. But that, yeah, I'm down again. Hold on. But that was. <laughs> that was kind of his plan as like a blaze of glory type thing. Is that a rage spell? Uh, it is. Oh, but you set it off on you. Okay. Yeah, I set it off like point blank. Right? It's like throwing a grenade at someone a yard away. All right. Gotcha. <laughs> so, yeah, Here, you would catch. catch yourself in that. Uh, junk. Yeah, you see this uh, little halfling thing that's on top of junk just get completely blown into these little colorful sprays of meat and gore. Um, it looks like he's been hit with paintballs all the way up his body, basically. Um, this junk kind of stumbles back, shielding his eyes. I didn't kill um, junk. Nope. That guy. <laughs> I don't know how John is looking, but and you see uh, poor Meryl just collapse again. <sighs> In my uh, head, like, John just, like, got chucked, like, across the room, so. <laughs> yeah, you see, just as you kind of break yourself free, Rectum, you see, just in time, this explosion go off beside you, and halfling bits going across the room, uh, junk covered in gore and colorful things, and John just flying across the room, hitting the ground hard in the distance, and Meryl drop where he is again, leaving you in front of this huge creature who's going to attack you with both of its bites now. I figured. Let's see, eight... <laughs> 14? I don't know if that one hits you or not. Uh, defense is 14. All right, so yes, and the other one is a 19, so yes. Yeah. Oh, damage is 6, plus 6 is 12. Yeah, well, I have 11, so... So these, you know, once again, they just charges right in. These two huge bites, one kind of getting a hold of your chest. This time, it just kind of shakes you back and forth a few times. You guys can hear the bones snapping on Reckham as he's flung to the side, skittering across the ground next to you, John. Uh, this thing lets out this huge roar, its eyes scanning around, kind of setting their sights on you, John, who'd be the next closest one. And it starts to slap its claws on the ground and drag itself forward. Um, over to the side, though, you do see Junk as he kind of looks around. He puts, slams his hands together, almost like he's clapping, and you see these radiant of uh, lights just kind of pulsate from his hands. Um, everybody within 30 foot, so everybody is going to heal their healing rate. Sweet oh, shit. Well... Including me. Yep. And, you know, he does this several times. Just kind of slams his hands together, and you see this radiance of light kind of rolled out, and he does it again, and radiance of light go out. Uh, and with that, he'll go over. He grabs a hold of you, um, Marrow. He kind of grabs you by the back of the neck and stands you up and slaps you on your feet, and then kind of gives you a shove forward towards this horror thing in the distance in front of you. He says, kill the beast. I got the man. And he kind of runs over to check on Retcom. So, but that does put you directly in front of this huge monster that you come in front face to face with, Marrow. So let's get a death save from Retcom real quick. Oh, you healed your healing rate. You're good. You're good. You're good. Wow. So everybody is up, huh? Would you want to go fast or slow? Well, up. Fucking fast. <laughs> so 
Marrow is fast. Reckham? Uh, fast. Fast. John? Um, does using a pass ability, is that a fast action? Uh, generally. Well, what one is it? It doesn't really specify. It's the selfless recovery thing. Oh, that should be a tr- selfless recovery. should be triggered, so that's basically a free one. Okay. All right, then, yeah, John, I'll go fast then. All right, and John. All right, well, whatever gaze order you guys want to go into. Um, oh, you can see this. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. John will like kind of pull himself up, you know, like roll away and trying to get away from, you know, this thing that's now making its way towards him. And he's going to be like kind of muttering to himself and, you know, trying to heal um, Redkim and Marrow. Um, for equal to their healing rate. So, yeah, both of them would get their healing rate. So, recommend Marrow, heal your healing rate. Yes. Um, yeah, besides you, John, you can see this huge orc come over and just kind of grabs you and lifts you back to your feet as well with one hand. And kind of ruffles your hair a little bit, says, I like you. As he <laughs> kind of hefts his axe back up that he picks up and starts running in towards this horror thing. Um, yeah, oh, and John would uh, try to pick up his staff that they can see through. I forgot about that. <laughs> Uh, so you did your healing rate. So okay, Meryl and Retcom, you guys are up. Uh, I'm happy to go. Um, so in front of this thing, I have um, a staff, and I'm just gonna fucking hit it in the face. <laughs> um, Which face? None of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, well, it's gonna be a ten to hit. Uh, yeah, that's not a hit. Yeah, so I just like stumble forward and take a wild swing and just sort of whiff completely. <sighs> All right. And let's see, Retcom, you are up. He is attacking again. All right. Somehow. <laughs> Surprisingly. Let me see. Let me make sure that's okay. But yeah, I can't. Sixteen. Uh, yep. Okay. For seven damage. Got it. And this thing is up. You can see this thing lets out this huge roar when you guys hit it. Well, you swipe at it, and Reckham actually hits it, and it kind of pulls itself up a little bit. These two huge teeth kind of gnashing towards both of you. Um, the whole thing takes on almost like this enraged sort of appearance. Its claws kind of grow longer from its nails, tearing up the floor every time it tries to move and it starts swiping at you. Um, I got two attacks, a bite, and a claw attack on you, Reckham. So I got a 12, which is a miss, and a 16, which would be a hit. Um, just I thought it was me who was like standing right in front of the thing because I got pushed. Into yeah, you did. Reckham's right there, too. Oh, sweet. Awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cheers, mate. So, yeah, he misses with his claw on you, Reckham, but the teeth kind of come around, latching onto your armor, digging into your shoulder blade a little bit. It's only going to be two points of damage on that one, though. Woo-hoo. And then, Marrow, you can see this other one goes towards you. Okay, let's see if I got good on the 20. Uh, 16. Uh, yeah. And I can't reach that die, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. And the bite, I got a 23. Oh, uh, yeah. Jeez, yeah. Four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve damage then. <laughs> it's just it's just such what? a bloodbath. <laughs> Every time it's such a bloodbath, one way or another. So that would be with the claw attack, so I'm going to need a strength challenge roll from well, you. I'm fucking I'm fucking down. That's okay. I still need a strength challenge roll with three banes. <laughs> We gotta get there first. <laughs> Would you believe it? M- minus one. Sweet. So what you're gonna do is roll me a one d six, and see what severs. What severs? <laughs> if, it's, if it's a hand, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, Morgan. I'm gonna come to your house. So basically, one is your head, which you'd be dead. Two is your left shoulder. Three is your right shoulder. Four is your left leg. Six or five is your right leg. And six is my uh, choice. You see, uh, fucking damn it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a six. So a six. All right. Well, 
I'm going to say, yeah, he kind of comes in. He can feel this sickening crunch as it takes your arm, just snapping your arm in its jaws. As it kind of swings you to the side, this claw, these huge black claws, they're almost like obsidian blades, just kind of takes a quick swipe at you as it throws you to the side. You're going to lose your left leg. <laughs> you can still see it laying there. It was a very clean slice, you know. <laughs> I'm going to pick it up and beat him with it. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> and let's see, Junk's going to rush in. <coughs> and completely whiff on that as he swings his axe. He just kind of sends spark <laughs> across the floor. Because I got a four total. <laughs> Who would like to go fast? Uh, Me. <laughs> Are you up? Uh, oh, no, I'm not. I'm fucking dead. I forgot about that. Uh, well, um, uh, I'm Red comes going to try. He's going to attack. He's going to go fast. Sorry, All right. <laughs> fast. John. Um, John's going to go slow, I suppose. All right. Try and dump a healing potion or something down. Uh, yeah. something. <laughs> so, Red, come you were up first. All right. Um, oh, this is potentially great. Oh, yes. Okay, I got a 23. All right. So that, that means I get right. forceful uh, strike as yep. well. Because you beat his armor by five, too. Yep. So, because his armor was 14 or 16? 15. 15, okay. Uh, okay, so for damage, yes, six, three, six. Yes, 15 damage. Nice. <laughs> I mean, it's something. <laughs> you can feel your black steel braid. This thing went into like a frenzy. And you can see that it's pretty much kind of locked into this frenzy mode. Its claws are swiping everywhere, these teeth gnashing. I'm just kind of bring your blade across. You can feel it sinking nice and deep right into the throat of this thing as it kind of whips its head around when it throws poor uh, marrow to the ground. You can feel your blade just cleanly cut right through the rest of it. And its head kind of hits the floor. You take off one of the heads. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, junk. <laughs> uh, junk is going to try and take it out if he can. Ugh, no, not even close again. So you see Junk, he's, he's trying to, at least trying to hit this thing. His blades just, as he was all set, he had a perfect lineup on this head that you severed. And just as you pass through, his blade comes down as well. Would have severed the head too, but he misses. Um, That leaves uh, John before this thing goes. So for the third time now. John is going to go over to Miro and try and uh, help it. <laughs> so, like he's going to be like you know ripping like shreds of like anything really like trying to like stop the bleeding like take his belt like wrap around the leg or whatever like. Um. Oh, and I'm going to dump a healing potion down his throat. All right. So Miro, heal your healing rate. That will you see this uh, nice flesh, pinky skin covering up where his leg was. Well, I guess it'll be nice fleshy twigs. And since he's changing and looking at the moment, as you kind of come to and you take whatever form you decide to, Meryl, you, uh, yeah, your left leg, you can see it lying, this little bundle of sticks over in the corner of the room. Um, you can take an action if you would like, though, Meryl. <laughs> yeah, I would. I, I stand up. Well, sort of. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I am. Um, Mara has a moment and just kind of thinks to himself, where his life's gone. Um, <laughs> Re-examining things. <laughs> yeah, and just after a moment, he looks up and he says, do you know what the worst thing is? Is that I just blame this fucking orc for everything. And despite the raging monster, can I reach the orc? It's fine yeah. if not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pick up my sword and I'm going to cut off his fucking leg. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> I'll say if you do more than half of his hit points that are left, you can definitely sever a leg. Sweet. Thank you. His armor class is a 12 if you can hit him. Well, you're not trying to sever his leg with your staff, though, are you? No, I, I have, like, a short sword. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, trying to kneecap him or something. Yeah, that's uh, 18. Uh, that's a hit. Come and on. You want to do at least five points of damage. Okay. Uh, right. Fuck yes. Uh, eight points of damage. <laughs> 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 
Eight. Actually, that's going to take him right down to two. <laughs> Go ahead. You can describe your revenge that had nothing to do with this. So part. I turn around, I think, firstly, he attacked me because of who I decided to be. <laughs> then he fucking pushed me into this weird dog thing, which I have to worry about in a moment. <laughs> and on top of that, he's got a shit name, and I hate him. So I'm going to just, like, kind of sort of works himself around and just fucking just hacks his leg into the <laughs> Poor junk. What the hell? <laughs> and he's just, like, Maro's just screaming, like, how do you like it? <laughs> So you see, whatever, what does Mayo turn into this time? Is he still the same goblin he got? Nothing. He's, he's just, he's no. just a... Uh, bundle of twigs. Himself. Yeah. So you he's just see this bundle punk. of twigs come to life beside you, wreck him, and just start hacking at Junk's leg. <laughs> uh, Orc has no clue what the hell is going on. But, um, yeah, that would be the end of that round. Beginning of the, yeah, middle, I'll, I, I, the other thing he shouts is, uh, leave him, he's mine. Just in case anyone was going to attack, <laughs> I do not want help. So this huge dog horror thing, still in a rage, is it swiping and trying to attack at you guys? You know, flinging around everywhere. Um, it's turn. So uh, let's see, this one will be uh, well on junk. Because he's right there. Junk is dead because he hit both times and he only had two hit points. Right, sweet. So yeah. This thing just completely, this big, huge claw swipe comes across, and it just, between his leg like, getting hacked off, and you can see Junk's pissed off look at this bundle of twigs hacking at his leg. His <laughs> hand up, looks over. It's just one clean swipe by this thing's blades, and it just leaves huge, several big <laughs> chunks just ripped from poor Junk as he's thrown across the room. And then these two are on you, Retcom. Nice. A 13 and a 21. Uh, well, the 13 didn't hit. The 21, of course, unfortunately, did. That's only the bite, though, so four or five points of damage. All right. And that's the end of the round, so who would like to go fast? Me, please. Mero, got it. Yeah, John will, too. Right. Um, this beast is looking pretty worse for wear. You can see it's just gushing blood everywhere. And it is? Yeah. All right. In that case, I'm going to go fast and try to kill it. All right. You guys are all up first. <sighs> I'm just going to lie down and go to sleep. Actually, I'm well, it's not going to probably be dead. I'm going to use its last bonus ability here for Frenzy. So these two attacks are going to be on you, Retcom. <laughs> Five, so the 16, so it's going to be another bite that only hits you. Darn. Five, seven points of damage, though. Well, then I'm dead, or I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> So you see this kind of tear into Rackcomb, this last little bit of energy this thing has, pinning him to the ground, uh, just tear and hit him with this one little head that it has left. You can see Rackcomb's blood just spilling out and kind of throws him aside, snapping on him as it crunches over. It starts moving towards John, not really paying attention to this bundle of sticks beside it. So John and Mero, you guys are up first. All right. So... As John watches Rekton go down, he's going to run in that direction and, like, grab his black steel sword or whatever the hell it is as it's, like, falling. And he's just going to, like, just jump and just, like, just slam it into this thing and, like, trying to stab into it. Awesome. Go for it. Let's see. That is for a 16. That's a hit. What's the damage on your blade? Is it 1d6 plus 1? It's, um, it is, uh... Or actually, two, oh, actually, it'd be 1d6. No so it's two, 2d6 for me, but 1d6 for the blade itself. Okay. So 1d6, Mike. Um, assuming you can do two points, it's dead. Oh, no, he looks froze. Uh-oh. Oh, there he is. Okay. Right, you froze for a second, Mike, so I'm not sure if he did anything. Oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be 1d6 damage. If you can do two points or more, it's dead. <laughs> that was a one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marrow, you were up before it goes, at least. So, so Marrow begins. I add my strength to it. Oh, uh, uh, no, you don't. Not for no weapon, you don't. Oh, damn it. Never, Never mind. <laughs> Marrow um, begins turning back into his, uh, into just his uh, old human form, 
and as he does so, he looks next to him, sees John lying unconscious, reaches down behind him and pulls out a healing potion, and then begins to uh, squeal and try and pour it on his leg to uh, to see if he can reattach it. <laughs> <It's> frantic. <laughs> Well, you can heal your healing rate, but if you're trying to stick your bundle of twigs to your bundle of twigs, yeah, it's it's like, it just kind of continues to fall off. You stand up and the twigs just kind of fall to the ground. Yeah. Um, as a changeling, you can regrow your leg. You just need a full rest to do so. Oh, oh never mind then. <laughs> Perhaps he doesn't know that, oh, though, and you're I frantically do. trying to yeah. like bind your twigs to your twigs. And... Um. All right, well, with that, this thing has its regular action left, so this one is going to be on you. Oh, yeah, John's moved away from it. Oh, no, he's not. So, yeah, two attacks on you, John, first. Awesome. Uh, 13. I don't know if that one does, and that one definitely um, does. Not. No? Yep. I, what was it? I only have a 10, so. Okay, yeah. Uh, six points of damage for its bite, then. And then this one is on you, Mero. Uh, 16 and a... 17, so yeah. <laughs> That's going to be like 23 points of damage to you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I need a strength saving throw for that one, though, because that was a claw. <laughs> uh, 12. 13. Yeah, that's, a, that's a success, at least. So he doesn't sever another limb. <laughs> oh, my God. But yeah, you're down. This thing just goes into a fridge. Uh, with uh, this bundle of sticks just kind of shatters in the back corner of the room. You can see they all kind of wiggle, trying to form back together. Just Four in little pieces of pile. Um, all, you know, this last head and these two claws kind of spin around towards you, John, moving towards you. You are up because you're the only one that is up. All right, well, I'm I'm just going to assume like this sword is like still like stuck, like impaled into this thing. So John's just going to take his staff and just baseball swing it. All right. All you got to do is hit it. Or a 15 on the die. 15 yeah. or die fence. You're going to take it out because it only has one hit point. Awesome. So you can describe what you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so John gets a little creative here. Instead of like just baseball swinging like into the body of this thing, he's just going to like use the staff like a hammer. He's just going to pound the sword like farther down into it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, you know, this first one, you can let this thing lets out this almost human like scream. And you pound this thing up deeper and deeper. As it finally falls to the ground, you can see this mangy fur and like nasty looking flesh melt off from it all the way down to the bones. And the bones look very strange. You can see all sorts of skulls, uh, finger bones, legs, and stuff. And there's all this body just kind of melts away leaving these bones there you can see the bones themselves too start to kind of reform and kind of knot together and you can see there's about 10 11 different little half lean bones that made up this thing and they're all just kind of laying scattered across the floor and every time you can hear these slowly echoing sort of cries as they fade away behind you junk with a severed leg and torn up body lies there a bundle of sticks smashed across the back of the room and retcom completely pretty much eviscerated on the floor at the moment all right so john would get back up and then he would go over to junk first of all and look down at his nice you know shiny axe and he can't really use it himself but he would find value in it anyway so he would pick it up and take it with him of course but then um he would go about the room and like you know using healers to try and like put his friends back together as best he could <laughs> no just i'm not on you know but would you be able to see my mouth to like pour a healing potion or whatever. <laughs> Just gonna jump. Out. You can sprinkle it on the sticks, I guess. <laughs> four, this, four deaths. This, this, this game. That's awesome. Sorry. <laughs> At least he had enough healing to get to you guys before he had to make death saves, pretty much. Oh. Yeah. Like I am all out of like healing potions, spells, all that. I'm down to a goddamn healer's kit at this point. <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've got a healer's kit with two uses left. If I, I got, um, pull through, <laughs> I can do that. I got, I got two healing potions. <clears throat> you would see his two healing potions in his sack of twigs, <laughs> or whatever the hell he has. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so, yeah, if you uh, check um, Junk too, you can see that he has three little milky white vials that are. Oh, I'm not quite perfect. sure what he had. Um, yeah. He's got his obsidian axe, um, just basic hide hides for armor, nothing major. And then his, well, I'm assuming you gave him back his obsidian knife there. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, actually, I would, I would have left it in the thing. So, like, if you can get it out of it, good luck. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do we heal? Um, for the potions, it was the healing raid. I'm not sure. The okay, healing. that's right. Okay, so. Are you using both the arrows to, for one on each of them? Or? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Mero and Reckham, you guys can heal your healing rate. So Mero, coming up, he's he's just in his like normal human form. So right, I, I think, firstly, uh, I can, I think I can grow back the leg. We just need to, you know, take a rest. Secondly, I think when we do take the rest, we should do it down here in this basement type place, get out of the sun. Thirdly, if I ever see another halfling again, I'm going to kill it. I'm and totally fourthly, okay with all that. Yeah. And fourthly, uh, we should burn the bodies of everyone. But unfortunately, I can't help, so you two will have to do it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Redkim is going to use his healer's kit on himself once and then on whomever else needs it well, well if we're having if we're having a rest we get to heal our healing rate right, right? Yeah. right um okay what the question morgan um for this divine ecstasy thing that i used um it just says afterwards i have to make a will challenge roll um to succeed it doesn't like give a number or anything so like how does uh challenge rolls if it ever says challenge roll it's always a 10 is the difficulty oh. Oh. Sweet. So John gains one insanity because of that. All right. Do I do I gain anything for dying four times? I don't think there's any. Right. Actually, you guys should have saved when you seen the thingy, but I forgot. So it's okay. Unfortunately, well, I forgot. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I mean, not that it'll matter because we're just gonna you know rest. But if anything attacks us, do I have any stat changes due to lack of leg apart from? You know. Um, I'd say you'd always have to go slow unless you're already like within melee range or something. Um, mm -hmm. you know, just flavorful things, but M maybe lose a bit of my agility <laughs> for the moment. Yeah. yeah. Before you hop along. Yeah. But yeah, like if if we're um if we're just resting, like what time of day is it? Probably. Um, it would have been like mid afternoon. Mid, yeah. So I, I think just like have a re just take a day basically, uh, a day and a night. Just chill here, rest up, I think, because otherwise, you know, I'm not going to be able to travel until after, a, like, a long rest, so. You could hop just fine. <laughs> Probably right. get old pretty quickly. <laughs> so on the bright side, these halflings did have a nice little collection of, uh, you know, vegetables and cheeses and stuff that are on this oh, table. Shit, they have any soup? No, no. I mean, yes, yeah, you can make one. There's a little fire pit. They have all the little cooking utensils in that chest that you opened up. Yeah, but like, even if you have the exact same ingredients and everything, you never can quite make it the same as a, a professional. Yeah, as a professional halfling yeah. chef. Um, so yeah, as you guys kind of take the rest, you can see the sun outside, the kind of shadows is, uh, cast down into this hole in the ground, disappear, and it's kind of replaced by that reddish orange disgusting sort of glow as you guys go on through the afternoon and into the evening you can see the up above on the very top roof of this area there's a little hole in the ceiling like a chimney basically for the smoke and stuff to escape but you can see this red glow on the floor that slowly kind of moves across as this orb this red sky star thing kind of moves across the sky eventually it just kind of moves across this whole floor right when it gets to the center of this room and it's kind of just this reddish beam that kind of comes down right in the center room where it lands on the floor. You can see what looks to be um, almost like a uh, 
illusionary sort of image kind of crops up. It looks like this large stone white tower that is made out of bones. And it just kind of glimmers there, almost like an illusion for a few moments before this, you know, this ray of reddish light kind of moves away from it and it kind of disappears again. Um, I need a perception check from everybody. Oh, oh not fucking 20, bitches. Let's see. Nine. I got a 20. Nice. So you kind of see this thing, um, John. Looks interesting and stuff, but, you know, your, your attention's kind of elsewhere for whatever reason. Uh, you other two, though, notice when you can see this, if you look close enough, you can see what looks to be little people that are slowly filing into this building, almost in long, these long lines. Um, you can see the surrounding terrain. It's just crowds and crowds, gangs of people that are roving towards this tower and then entering through the doors. It's basic square tower, doors on all four sides, <laughs> off single file as they just file into this building. Um, as you are looking around, John, you don't notice this, but you can, for once, as you kind of walk around the room and look, as you kind of scan the walls and stuff, everything in here, it looks like it was a natural cavern, but you can see all these little paintings on the wall halflings. You can see some of them are very simple, you know, like family lineages and uh, recipes for halfling barley soup and other these other little things around. <laughs> they make excellent soup. <laughs> Intermingled among all this, though, are these little pictures of all of the halflings kind of gathered around in crowds um, down on their knees like they're bowing down or they're worshipping something. Every one of these has this little reddish uh, painting that is in the sky around them like they're trying to worship something kind of make that connection between this red star and this red painting that's on you know every now and then um you also find one kind of tucked away down into the corner and it shows what looks to be a halfling um it's covered in this little bits of mangy fur these long black claws and down to the resting at her feet are four little desiccated hands all severed left hands that match the hand of narcool that she seems to be like presiding over. Awesome. Um, so John would like trying to like make a copy of like the pictures or whatever like as you them, like around those stuff. Um yeah you can yeah you can probably just put them into your notes or something so you can make copies of them. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to do before actually taking a full rest? No, I'm just like hopping around with my little like half grown back baby leg. <laughs> Your little Groot leg. Yeah. <laughs> if you've seen Deadpool, you know, from back it's like that. Right. I bet it looks huge. Yeah. <laughs> um, it does look pretty weird from the side when he like stands and extends his leg out forward or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, but not just resting up. All right. Um, assuming you guys set up watch and stuff, the night goes perfectly smooth without any problems. All right. Um, by the time morning rolls around, you know, that kind of makes that rotation. You can see this uh, red star outside kind of make its movement pass over top of this chimney hole. And when it does so, you can see that same little image kind of come into a few of that little tower and these people filing into it. And it'll last for like 10, 15 minutes before it fades away again when the sun moves or the star continues to move. Um, but yeah, early morning kind of rolls around, and you get that same exact thing that the sun just doesn't seem to come up. Just left with this red looming star above you. Right, well. Right, well I guess let's head to the bone tower. Yeah. And, um, all yep. those people. Um, that was pretty scary. I'd suggest we maybe sneak up and try and hide and observe a bit better before we uh, you know, just in case it's like an army or something who want to kill us. So I think maybe we, we want to go and just sort of watch for a bit. You know, see if we can get an idea of what's going on. All right. Who's headed up the little exit thing first? Um, Red Kamal. That's, that's a loaded uh, question or anything. Yeah, Red Red Kamal. <laughs> right. um, Red Kamal, when you get up there, you kind of peek your head out and look around. You can see in the middle of this halfling little tank camp, Probably a good 15 of them or so, kind of shambling about. 
shambling half, halflings. Yes. Well, Shitty. Like before, I, covered right. in open sores, these large blisters. So they don't seem mentally totally there. Kind of zombie-ish as they move about. They'll pick stuff up off the ground, kind of look at it, and put it down, and move on. Okay, considering what's just happened, do I have to make a will save against just running out there and, and, and murdering all of them immediately? Because fuck a bunch of halflings. Well, you'd have to enter combat with them all. But. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna relay what I see, of course, <laughs> to Miro and John. I basically look back over my shoulder, look back over my shoulder, and say, "More fucking halflings." John physically face palms. <laughs> about, about how many of them are there? There's 15 of them that you counted. You notice that they stay a good, you know, 30, 40 feet from this area. There's none right in the little vicinity, but it's kind of. Toward the center of town, so you still have to get out. Maybe, somehow. maybe that's where. Uh, maybe, maybe that's where that sort of power, whatever, is sort of turning them into this. Is maybe it's the, maybe it's a hand of Narku. Um, I reckon we want to try and disable these guys and see if we can, you know, get to the center of them. See what the, you know, is it like a well or something in the middle that they're kind of crowding around, or is it just nothing? Um, it's just a little half. You can't really see. It's the main heart of the halfling village, but you can't see what's really out there. Yeah, I want to go have a look. Mm -hmm. I think that this might be key. Um, I could do another avalanche. I'd probably take out a good few of them. I know you can just run out in the middle of them all, group them all up, and then blow yourself up again. <laughs> <laughs> see, I, the avalanche can do the same thing. But I don't have to be in inside it. I mean, I don't have to be inside the other one, but there's no guarantee that will go well. Whereas the avalanche, you know. Uh, well, two, now, two, I could make, I mean, I've, I do have, on the scout path, I have the forward observer ability. So, I mean, I can just try to sneak up there. And, I mean, especially if they seem kind of relatively disinterested and zombified. You know they might not, you know, but but they might not notice anyway. But I can uh, I can make the I can make the challenge roll to to hide and sneak um, with a, with a boon. So or yeah, or we, I or mean we can just blast them. I mean, that, you know, not, yeah. The problem with that though is that there's fifteen. Yeah. Well, um, I, could, I could turn into a zombie halfling. Hey, you killed it. There is a dead one. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> True, right. Yeah, we can. You could do that. Just like give it a go, and then if worse comes to worse, it just. I, I do like that plan, yeah. All right. So I'll turn into, <laughs> into a zombie halfling. Um, oh. Could you turn into the big York and go scare the piss out of them? <laughs> well, could I turn into the, the little girl with the demonic shit? Yeah. All right, I reckon I'll do that. Yeah, so I'll turn into I'll turn into the girl who lost her name, and uh, yeah, just like walk uh, walk up to them cautiously. Um, kind of exit out of this little cavern area, and make your way across this little enclave in the earth. As you pass by the first one, it kind of swings its head around towards you. You can see half of its face has completely been blown apart. This brain matter just kind of hangs out. And then when it kind of wings around to look at you, most of its brain just kind of flops to the ground beside you, splattering there, rotting away. As, yeah. As it, as it, like, whirls around to look at me, I'll, uh, like, growl at it. Like, sort of you can see it slowly kind of lumbers up a little bit, starting to slowly move towards you. In the distance, you can hear this one kind of lets out this groan sort of thing in the distance that's echoed there's more and more of them kind of turn to face at you all of them are in different states of well they're all murdered by crazy orcs so you know some of them are missing limbs heads are crushed in uh, their bodies are emboweled but they all just kind of start groaning slowly walking towards you i need a will challenge roll from you see if you can keep these things under not 20. yep <laughs> fucking yes so both of you kind of move up and watch as this happens. You can see uh, Meryl has this form of this girl halfling, whatever she was, uh, moving across. And one will kind of start slinking out of one of the tents and starts following behind her and another one. 
by a few moments, he has a line of almost all 15 of these things, all just kind of grouped behind him, following him towards the center of this town. Um, is that where you're headed? Yeah. But right. if they're all in a line behind me, then I'm just going to, like, kind of look over my shoulder to see that. I'm just going to, like, turn around and do an avalanche in a, in a cone. <laughs> all right. Because it, I'll get them all if they're all behind me. Yeah, they're all behind you. Uh, presumably. So I just turn around and just, again, kind of blow this wind that crystallizes and looks not hopefully i don't I, uh yeah i don't need to roll they do agility challenge rolls save oh. for half oh jeez probably oh damage. shitting hell well what's the half damage going to be first because uh well the uh 20 points of damage total two fives a six and a four um and half so regardless if they fail because they only have nine hit points each so they'd kill them all Yes. <laughs> you can go ahead and describe what you do. So I just, um, I like, you know, I see them all in a line. And last time I did it, it was like lots of sort of little ones and, you know, a few bigger chunks. This time it's just one massive, long kind of shard of ice that sort of comes out of my mouth, sort of sword swallower style, and just crystallizes and just shoots through all their necks and then just kind of lands in the ground, kind of like a spear. And they all just synchronize, sort of fall down. So you made like a halfling kebab at the end of your ice yeah. god. <laughs> Pretty yeah. nice. Just blows these things right apart in a line behind them. And then I'll just thumbs up to the uh, to the other guys who are watching. So as you give them that thumbs up, uh, Retcom, John, you look at them, maybe give the thumbs up back, but in the distance, you know, it sounds like it's a, probably a couple miles out, you hear this loud screaming sort of roar that echoes across the plains. And sort of dies off. You see this huge flock of birds in the distance scatter into the sky. Some of them blowing apart as they do from the sun that's above. Um, that's such a good image. That's behind you, as you turn, uh, Marrow, and you look, you can see what looks to be a, a stone right in the center of this huge enclave. As you kind of glance around, you realize that it, it's really right in the center, almost like it was kind of hollowed out around it. Um, it's about 10 feet taller, so it makes like it's made of some sort of greenish colored stone. Um, you don't get the sense that there's any magic or anything radiating off of it, um, and it's not like warm, or you don't see that it's magical in any case. But on each side of it, you can see all these engravings. Each side has what looks to be a hand, this desiccated four-fingered hand engraved into the stone. And along the bottom of it, you can see all these little uh, ruins. I don't know if anybody speaks halfling or whatever, but you can get the sense that it looks like it's uh, spelling out the god of Narkul. Uh, the dead ghoul. It kind of has this thing. It looks like almost like an altar. If you look at the top of it, you can see it's covered in this thick, uh, sort of reddish brown crusted stuff. Is is this the is this what was pictured? Do we recognize this is what was pictured in the in the uh, the hole in the ground where we died seventeen yeah. times? <laughs> it resembles it. It's you know that that was the bone tower or the right. bone column. Um, this one, it resembles it, but it's made out of, like, an orange stone, and it's not like you can't actually walk into it. It's more of, like, a statuish. Okay. Um, actually, you can give me a perception check, too, since you're right there, Mero. Uh, 16 on the die, 17. Nice. So you got this down. You can see at the base of this, on each side, on each of the four sides, is a little knob. Um, it's kind of sunk in a little bit, and you can see it looks like almost like a drawer knob that you could grab and slide open like it was a drawer or something. But on either side of that is a set of handprints. I'll look back, scratch my head, and just put my hands on, see if that does anything. Yeah, set your hands there. It's very cool. You almost get this sense of calming... Uh, a nirvana like state of essence any day will challenge roll. <laughs> Six. Six. So, what is Marrow's greatest desire? Marrow's greatest desire is um, to. Oh, fuck, I wish I had some prime for this. Uh, I think Marrow's greatest desire is to have his own face. His own face. Nice. I like that. 
so as you put your hands there, you get this overwhelming sense of calm, this nirvana-like experience. And then you see this old gentleman beside you. You didn't see him there but first, um, but as he kind of glances over, he doesn't look like a halfling. He just looks human, has a long white beard, has simple clergyman clothes on, a uh, very friendly looking guy. He kind of stares at you for a moment and uh, says, I can give you your face, Meryl. I have watched you for a long time. I, I know your deepest desires and that one thing you wish you could have, uh, a face to call your own. Wouldn't you like a face? Something that uh, distinguishes you from the rest, not just another bundle of sticks. No, it's just speechless. Doesn't know what to say. He says, come, come. Don't let your leaves be tongue-tied. Speak up. He says, wouldn't you like to have a handsome face to impress the ladies? Or perhaps a youthful visage to enjoy the trials of the children? Uh, y yeah. He says, but... he says I, don't, I don't need anything from you, son. He says, all you need is to be given a hand. Would you like a little hand to help? A helping hand. Can I can I make some kind of roll to see <laughs> if I can sort of, you know, because I can tell that 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 sentence is laden with meaning. But um, can John, I make a roll to see if I can? Yep, I'm John not. and Reckham, you guys are starting to. You know, maybe pull yourself up. What do you do after he shish kebabs these poor halflings? You can see him go over to this thing and put his hands to it. Looks like he's speaking to somebody. You don't see anybody there. I'm going to go see what's going on. Okay. I think the cults and stuff previously, John is like, he's like, oh, fuck. No. <laughs> All right. Um, are you headed up there too then, John? Yeah, totally. Right. Um, I need... Uh, Agility challenge rolls from both of you. Three banes. Wow. Three banes. Jesus. Uh, six. All right. Oh, I, I'm already in negative territory. That's right. horrible. <laughs> so, yeah, he, as you guys run forward to help, you see this almost like the shimmering glass appear in front of you that you hit hard, kind of slamming into as you kind of look around, it's just like the shimmering little grove, like he's put a like a glass cup over top of both of you. Um, you can press up against it, and whenever you touch it, you can see like the shimmer kind of go along against it. As long as you're not touching it, you can't see it's there. It looks about 10 feet square that you're trapped within, and it's just above height level. So when, like, recommend you put your hand up, you can feel it right there, and it kind of shimmers a little bit. And when it does, as you do peer through this glass, though, you can see this old man talking to... Uh, Meryl sitting there, but you can't hear anything. You just see their mouths moving. Um, below you, as you feel something kind of scrape against your leg, Rick, when you look down, you see this large, about the slug, about the size of your forearm, start burying itself up through the dirt, and then another one, and another one. Would you guys like to go fast or slow in your little 10-foot cube with what looks to be four giant slugs, big leechy sort of mouths with teeth pulling themselves up out of the ground? Uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go fast. All right, where it comes fast, John. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go fast. All right. Well, we'll swap over to you for a second, Meryl, as you're speaking to this. Um, you can give me a will challenge roll. Um, it's gonna be against his will though, which is a any, seventeen. Any banes? Considering it's his greatest desire. Uh, not in this case, no. Um, I don't know if you have anything that'll help you with a boon, though. Uh, nah. Right, um, so yeah. I'm, yeah, so I have to be at 17. Yep. Shit. Um, will challenge. So that's plus one. 16. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe you don't quite catch that. Or He seems like... Um, I don't know, you almost get this very warm sense, this sense of comfort when you look at him, almost like you recognize him at one point. And then you're like, you know, yeah, you know, this is the guy who took me in when I was just a lad when they found me in the woods, uh, helped kind of recognize him for a few moments. And even though 
Mero doesn't notice this. You, as a player, um, his visage completely changes to one that Mero would immediately recognize as a sense of comfort and a sense of welcoming. He says, come lad, come lad, would you like a hand? <laughs> yeah, yes, I'd, I'd like a hand. He says, uh, and what are you doing on the ground? He says, stand up, stand up. Yeah, I'll uh, get up and revert to like a human form. Yeah. So I'm like similar height. <laughs> He says, uh, it's been a long time, Mero. He says, uh, well, what have you been doing with yourself? He says, I came out here and I, I heard words you were camping with the halflings. And, well, it doesn't look like you had the best times here. Uh, no, they, um, they're, they're all zombies. He says, I had a feeling this would happen. This. Have you ever heard of the White Witch? No. This is a, a nasty bitch, a nasty bitch. Uh, she likes to take control of these things and creates corruption where she goes. But you know who who despises her more than me? She says, this is a, my lord, my, my savior. And he kind of puts his hand to the sky towards this red star and he says, uh, the man, the dead, the dead god, Narkul, would you like to hear a word of his preachings? Yeah. This is a, in, perhaps you can join forces with me and, you know, it'll be like the old times when we were younger and we scoured the land, killing the bad fellows. You remember that, right? Yeah. He says, we'll yeah. eradicate these little bastard halflings, get rid of them, euthanize them all. Halflings. I hate halflings too. He says, well, come, come. He kind of holds his hand out towards you for you to take his hand. I'll, I'll take his hand. As soon as you touch his hand, you get this extreme burning sensation that just crawls up your arm. Those of you in this little glass cube look out, you can see this bright red flame at the tips of his fingers as Mara holds his hand out like he's trying to take somebody's hand or something. And just uh, ash falling from his fingertips and starting to crawl up his arm. I'll let you guys go fast now. There's four giant slugs at the base of this last cup thing that you're trapped within. I'm I'm going to stab a slug. All right, go for it. Man, that's a natural one. Excellent. <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> right in the hole. <laughs> See, you try to stomp down one. It's just kind of like crunches into it, but it just kind of like pops out, you know, kind of like a greased pig underneath your boot. <laughs> Slithers out. John? You said this is like a 10-foot cube? Yep. All right, so, yeah, John's just going to, like, basically take his staff and, like, by the end of it, just, like, start golf swinging these things. <laughs> All righty. Give me a strength challenge or your attack. I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. Let's uh, see. Fuck. That's a three. <laughs> yeah, you can completely whiff. You can get the one lined up, and you just kind of swing around. You hit the side of that thing, and just kind of twang, you know, as you hit the side <laughs> of this glass side. Um, back out, Mero. You get this burning sensation. As you look down, you can see this like bright flame starting to kind of eat its way up this arm. And you look at yourself, and you look like your normal changeling self, these bundles of twigs and leaves, and just this ash falling from your fingertips. When you look at this man, he smiles. Like, he says, it's is okay. Not is, only. Yep, the, uh, is my hand like turning to ash, or is it yep, coming yep, from... Yep, yep, yep. Uh, he says, ah, don't panic, don't panic. It's okay, lad. He says, it's, it's just a moment. It, it'll pass, it'll pass. He says, come, come. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Give me a strength challenge roll with one bane. Uh, yeah, 13. 13, nice. So you don't, it, it, it stings a little bit, but it doesn't really hurt. Um, but you can definitely see these small embers, kind of little tiny little flames eating their way up your hand. And, you know, it kind of gets to your wrist and it starts to crawl up towards your forearm before it just kind of fizzles out, leaving the stump that's there. And he kind of, this old man, needs down. And almost out of nowhere, it seems he has this little box in front of him that he opens up. He says, come here. We'll take care of that for you and I'll teach you the ways of Narkul. And he kind of takes this stump, and as he opens up this box, you see this little four-fingered, desiccated stump of a hand in there that he lifts out, unwraps it with a little bit of a cloth. 
and he holds your forearm. He says, uh, it'll only hurt for a second, and, and your greatest desires, uh, they will be there. You will have a face again, lad. And it'll be like the old times. We'll get rid of all these little shitholes, get rid of these halflings, you and I. And he sets the stump, and he kind of pulls your arm forward as he goes to put the stump of a hand to your forearm. You can try to resist, or you letting him? Uh, I'll let him. I trust him intrinsically. All right. So yeah, you get this bright flash of pain kind of on your forearm that it only passes for just a brief second. And as you look down, you see this, uh, it's gonna be in your left hand, I'm sorry. And it's this four little, almost like a goblinoid hand, four fingers covered in little bits of wart and stuff. But as you look at it, you can see these five fingers kind of grow out and it takes on that fleshy sort of appearance and it crawls up your arm. What does Meryl's perfect, what does his divine form look like? What does he want to be? So, Marrow's face is, uh, he's got, um, sort of short, um, kind of black hair, um, sort of dark black eyes, um, and pretty tanned skin. Um, he looks, um, pretty much, you know, the Hollywood version of handsome, um, but like high cheekbones and, you know, just perfectly sort of weighted features. Nice. Um, as you kind of get ready to stop on another one of these slugs and you look down at them, you can see there's nothing there. You don't see these holes in the ground. And you look up and you just see this man, you know, in place of where Mero was, just standing there looking at himself. Um, Mero, as you kind of look back up, you don't see anything around. you just back to normal. You don't see this old man. You see the stone column there and everything, but the guy in his box are gone. I'll, uh, I'll kind of look around and look down at my hand. You get this little sense in the back of your head. He says, don't worry, lad. We'll speak again tonight. I had to go for a few. You see almost like this little warm clap on your shoulder, like a reassuring shrug. I like, I like how cool. Maybe we're going, going about this the wrong way. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, is my hand, like, what does my hand look like? Is it normal, or? You look at it, it looks perfectly normal. Um, look around for my, uh, my companions. Yep, they're over in the distance. You can see, looks like he's trying to stomp on something and then just suddenly kind of stops. And you can see John smack his staff out and all of a sudden stop because they just kind of look around with a bit of a confused face on their look as well. You guys can look up and see this new form that Mero has taken. You haven't seen it before, but it's Obviously, yeah. it's him. I'll run over and say, guys, guess whose face this is? Who? <laughs> it, it's mine. Well, yeah, it's on you. No, this is not a dead person's face. This is Marrow's face. No, so not cool it, gave it to me. Wh wh who? Well, I just spoke to my, my old friend, and he works for Naku, and he gave me my own face, and he well, gave me a hand. What, what old friend? Uh, he, he, was, he, uh, he was the one who, who taught me, you know, about all the, the, the magic and the, 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 he's a druid, a friend of mine. Wait, wait, and, and he gave you a, so Redcomb stops and gets into his pack and makes looks to make sure that the hand that he had is still there uh no it's not <sighs> Shit. <sighs> oh well you see, you see a little piece of paper that is folded up in there though okay thanks <laughs> and I'm open, you open that up and it's just a little iou not cool <laughs> <laughs> See, so, I think so, Narkul's a great guy. Do you know who is doing all of this horrible stuff with the fucking halflings? Who? It's the White Witch. So, do you not? Okay. Yeah, but okay. It's, okay, so, so you know, you don't see a. So what happened? <laughs> well, I went up, I put my hands on the altar, 
and then my friend arrived and I spoke to him and he said that he was you know a friend of Naku he was Naku was his savior and that it's the white witch who's doing all this and then my hand disappeared and then it got a new one from a box and then it attached to my hand and then I got my own face so you don't you don't think maybe that a, a servant of Narkul might lie about something? No, I, th I think Narkul's a, a, a great and friendly god. Redcomb looks around at all the zombie halflings dead and dying and in the distance not dying. It's the White Witch. She's the one who's doing all the bad stuff. So, uh, just a second, and right commotions to John. You know, let's 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 chat for a second. Like John, just like he's like, oh damn it! Like this is not good. Um, <laughs> what do we do? John's like uh, digging his pack, like looking for a book on like exorcisms or something. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Me, me, chop and sneak. That's all I do. I. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I can say like cutting off his hand. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I mean. Do we just hack his hand off? So yeah, I mean, if you guys actually kind of think of that, and you look over, you can see that his left hand is this sort of desiccated green, four fingered claw. And he he said he thought he would grow back his leg. Right. Remember exactly. So if we cut his hand off, he'll just regrow it tomorrow. I'll tell okay. you what, I hold him down. You top it off. <laughs> I'm just I'm just going to try to su surprise and chop his hand off. <laughs> I mean, is, how is how is he reacting to our to our little powwow a few feet away? Yeah, I'm just standing there like What's looking at you really confused because something great's happened to me and you guys are acting really weird. As if you're not happy for me. So John will look at Rick and be like on my signal, do it. And then John's going to cast Flash on Marrow and see here. Uh, flash Brilliant Light appears before the target. Make a will attack. Roll against the target's perception. On its success, the target becomes blinded for one round. So. Your perception. Perception. Just need your perception score. Yep, there you go. That is a 16. Nice. Shit. So you see this huge oh. brash flash uh, bright light in your eyes, Marrow. And everything around you just goes just this uh, whiteness. What? And then as that happens, John just yells, get him. <laughs> so, uh, moving fast, of course, uh, Redcomb spins around and uh, draws his black steel blade and aims for his left forearm, you know, pretty far up. I mean, <laughs> why take any chances? He's going to grow up back. So, somewhere between elbow and wrist. <laughs> All right. Do you want a regular attack it. roll or? Yep, do your attack. You're going to get another boon because he's blinded on top of whatever Shit. you already had. Oh, yeah. Okay. That would be a 22 total. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, in this bright scene, you can see Marrow's kind of dazed as he put his hands out a little bit. Oh, that perfect moment as you bring this black steel blade down, kind of taken off just below the shoulder area. When it does, you see his arm kind of hit the ground. Um, and this desiccated claw, the, the arm itself just kind of turns into leaves, or leaves and sticks on the ground, but you're left with this little desiccated claw that's starting to crawl away. And we will end the scene right there, so it's at 2 o'clock. <laughs> nah, that is awesome. I'm going to fucking kill you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, though. You might, you know, now that you're, you know. So how many times did we, did we how many deaths did we have there? Let me stop this broadcast real quick. So thank anybody who watched and